Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim live stream. Today, the 17th of May 2021, one minute past four in the afternoon here. Started a couple of minutes early for a change before we get the ball rolling. Uh, back in X-Plane 11 and our third ever adventure in the superb indie build Airbus Beluga, uh, an aircraft that you guys absolutely love me flying. And I've been trying to sort of plan this stream for a few weeks now, but I've been doing a few other things on the channel, but we finally got around to doing it. Today we've got such an awesome uh, cargo load to carry. So firstly I want to say a massive thanks to all of my members plainly who's edited and made this uh, APACA Logistics articulated lorry for us to carry today. Now for those of you who don't know, I have a second YouTube channel called Flight Deck to Sync Gaming, and we'll be doing uh, an APACA Logistics uh, series there. Uh, our last stream there we finished off in Oslo and there was a few ETS2 uh, updates and it, unfortunately it moved my truck to London uh, as one of the updates for Euro Truck Simulator and I thought you know what that would be an absolutely perfect way of setting up a stream. We can take our truck uh, that's broken down we're saying uh, in Oslo all the way back to Luton near our headquarters in London and tomorrow I'll cont uh, continue the Euro Truck Simulator uh, story uh, in London so it's really really cool to have done that today. Uh, Ryan Videos 94 welcome back as a member glad you uh, are back in uh, you get back into our members only discord enjoy using your custom modes in chat thank you uh, so much for the support there uh, so yes Oslo uh, right here in Oslo Gardaman happy constitution day to all my Norwegian friends uh, flying time to Luton will be 1 hour 55 minutes uh, completely cold and dark setup uh, in the Beluga we're going to do the loading procedure full setup look for the checklist uh, weather's looking a bit uh, interesting in the UK today a few thunderstorms around rumble of thunder perhaps later uh, so we'll take a bit of additional fuel to cater for that right let's zoom on into the uh, beluga here who've we got in chat tim fraser hope you're doing well um ice fire that's a very expensive method of truck repair yes here at alpaca logistics we spare no expense i god knows what the cost it would be to hire the beluga to carry a truck from oslo to luton but here at alpaca logistics you know money is no issue for us <laughs> we'll just spare the expense to get the trucks back to our home base there uh, looks like norwegian centers online uh, very very good we'll get atc that's very very kind to whoever uh, has come online to find some atc look we've got some our beluga's already here airbus look we've got some competition <laughs> <laughs> from the main main competitor Airbus. I think they're perhaps a little bit bigger there than the uh, Alpaca Logistics, but never mind. Who else have we got here? Craig Anderson, Samuel Butler, Norski, Dillo, Lubick, Alexander, Bakula. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in uh, today on this uh, Monday afternoon. And uh, who else have we got here? Listermin. Uh, excellent Jamlin, thank you again for making the excellent livery liveries. Love the BA1461 you made as well. I completely forgot to mention as well. One of my members, uh, Andy M71, got in contact with me this morning, and he is very kindly, uh, very kindly wants to donate a copy of the Airbus Beluga to someone today. So we are going to be doing a giveaway, and that's sponsored by Andy M71, one of my members. He insisted, he said, yeah, I'd like to give one away to someone watching the video, some member of the community. So we'll be doing a giveaway, so again, you could win a copy of the Airbus Beluga after landing in London. We've got everything going on here today. So thanks again, Andy M71. No doubt you'll uh, pop in at some point during the stream, or if you're already here, hello. I hope you're doing well. Uh, right, so if you remember rightly, um, Last time we did this, we want to pl kind of play the, the game of the, the Loadmaster. Uh, so we're going to start outside. Imagine we've just walked to the aircraft. We're ready to load the truck, uh, which is going to come round the corner behind this DHL uh, factory. Use a bit of your imagination for this. I uh, will imagine the walk around is uh, complete as well. There's Waffle, Jamlin's dog, on the spinner of uh, what are these engines. Are these CF I, CFs? I don't, I don't even know who the manufacturer is, but uh, there we are. Oh, someone's very kindly spawned on the same stand as me. Plenty of the stats available, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, he'll bugger off and go somewhere else. Uh, in fact, that's really ruined, uh, <laughs> ruined the immersion slightly. Uh, let me just uh, 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 let's uh, imagine we've just walked in here, closed the door, and we'll go into the cargo bay and get the carnivorous door open. There we are. So the loadmaster would be coming up here. I'm sure there's a little bit more to it, perhaps, in the real aircraft, but uh, there we are, let's... We have to... There we are! Flick it open! There we are, the, the bay door is opening and uh, ready to take on our articulated lorry uh, today. Now, with how plainly he's made this work, he's basically adjusted the Airbus wings payload, which is around the rough weight of, a, I think, I guess, an empty articulated tractor unit and a trailer. It's around 10 tonnes, I think, but uh, it should fit in quite nicely. Ah, yes, I think that person probably spawned in accidentally seems to have moved. 
uh, away. But yes, now the door's opening, we can head back on down here, go into the flight deck, turn the music down here slightly. Oh, there's a very loud door. Um, sounds like the dentist. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, much quieter here in the flight deck. And uh, let's now organise our uh, our truck. So if we go here to ground services, loader, and I believe the one we need to select is the Airbus wings. That is uh, how we've gone around here. Eight, it is eight six. I should think a tractor and a trailer unit be a little bit heavier. Request loader. Uh, there it is. Oh dear, our friend. <laughs> It's been run over by the truck, <laughs> but it's already on its way. Let's have a quick look outside. So the loadmaster is now quickly, well, he's running through the circuit breaker panel, in fact. And now there's the door. Let's just watch a little bit of the loading uh, going on. There we are, down we go. <laughs> loadmaster's very steady on his feet. There is the Alpaca Skylink truck driving forward. Uh, Ian Cummings unit and trailer are usually 15 tons empty. Ah, okay. Well, imagine, well, imagine then that uh, parts of the <laughs> chassis are missing then, perhaps as well. But uh, I think that was as close as we can get. But there it is. Slight issue as well that it's a Mercedes and not my Scania truck in the other game. But uh, that's to do with what trucks were available texture-wise. But I don't know if you can hear me. But there it is, look. ready for loading. It's uh, excellent. Run. Jump into the flight deck so we can get the ball rolling here whilst that's getting loaded there. Uh, pilot Apple Apple, finding the Beluga. Yes, our third time out. It's been a while since we've uh, definitely flown this uh, aircraft. Uh, Laura V, it would be super cool actually if you could do the wings delivery in Euro Truck Simulator. Yeah, if you could actually carry the wings, that would be neat. But uh, no, we'll be continuing the story on the second channel tomorrow, which I have put on a pinned comment above. Uh, so you can watch that there. Uh, Lawrence is Olaf the Load Bastard today. Brilliant. Uh, right, let's get the show on the road up here. We need to get some external power connected. So, external power is available. Let's put the batteries on. There we are. That's got the aircraft coming to life. <laughs> there is, well, Olaf and Olaf's friend who's now merged with the loader, but uh, I'm, sure he, I'm sure he won't mind. Um, we've stolen a Mercedes truck. Quick, let's get out of here. <laughs> Love it, David. Right, so I might actually turn the sounds down here slightly because it is very loud and neat. Soon. So batteries are on, uh, check the electric hydraulic panel on the normal hydraulics, uh, make sure the low pressure lights are illuminated, uh, verify the wiper switches are off, they are off at this stage, uh, flaps are up and indicating up as well, so the flap indicator panel is here, so zero, zero, and zero, so that is looking good. Uh, external power is already connected, we do the APU fire test now. So we check the squib, squib lights illuminated, we have loop A. I think you have to wait a short while perhaps, I think, after you've got AC power because you don't get the sounds. Yeah, I think that's that's simulated correctly. So I have to wait a little bit before we do the, the APU and uh, engine fire tests. Uh, I think it's catching up with me now. There we go. Well, we'll do it later. Um, so that's done. APU we won't turn on at this stage. IRS mode selectors to nav. To nav and initial display system is on, and oxygen low pressure supply 50, switch can come 40, on, 30, which 20, is here, 10. and the VHF radio is on as well down there. And natural flops, thank you. <laughs> can we achieve this journey with no fines? Thank you, natural flops, for the five pound donation. Uh, I hope I can actually get to Luton in the Beluga without any fines, but no doubt when we carry on the story tomorrow at 8 pm at ETS 2. There will be a few fines about to about to. I've set myself quite an epic challenge tomorrow, trying to spoil the rest of the UK, get 100% for the UK tomorrow, which might take probably three or four hours, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Thank you very much, uh, Natural Flops, there for your donation. Uh, there we are. So, uh, there's the truck coming in. We've got the IRS mode selectors on, VHF radios are set as required as well. And uh, now it says to put the basic information in the uh, FMC. So, the beauty with the Beluga is you have the additional radio tuning panel here, sort of a way of using A cars uh, to fetch your flight plan. So there's my sim brief user day. Request company routes. Give it a couple of seconds. Or, oh no, not even that. It's already in there. Look, company routes in. We'll also request the wind data pending, and it, it puts your routing in for you. So we'll save ourselves three or four minutes having to type that all out. Just wait for the wind data to come in. There you go, A cars wind data is received. 
and so we can now clear the scratch pad. And if we go here to the flight plan, uh, the FMS, it, it's all loaded. Look now, the alternate today we're going to use Stansted Echo Golf Sierra Sierra. It says none, but if you go back, you'll see, you'll see it says Stansted. We can align the IRS, and once the line is complete, it's all done. Cost index, it doesn't matter in the Beluga, there is no cost index, there's no profile mode, it's just a figure. Remember the FMS in this is straight from an A310 or an A300, so, so things like um, fuel burn, the V-speeds that are calculated are not accurate, that's why you have this separate bug card which converts it from the Bel from the A310 I believe it, to the, the Beluga, so so they basically just, uh, they don't have a custom FMC. Not that any bells have forgotten it, it's like the real aircraft is, it's just like this as well. So, uh, there we are, that's all loaded. Whilst I'm here, I'm uh, going to grab the ATIS and see what runway is in use. Whilst that's doing that, we can actually load our truck as well. So, head on. I was going to say head on outside. You can see it's very loud here, but I'm going to the sounds now. And uh, let me tune up the ATIS, make sure the radios are working. That frequency is 12715. Looks like the ATIS is on text only, unfortunately, guys. So I'll grab that now. So it's Oslo Gardamon Information India, time 1450 Zulu, so 20 minutes ago. Uh, ILS approach runway 01 left in use, that's great, that's the shortest taxi. It's a wet runway, transition levels 85, uh, 01 right is closed, surface winds 2803 knots, so it's pretty much 3 knot crosswind. Look at the truck going in, excellent. Uh, 2803 knots, uh, 10k, light rain, and the QNH is 9 9 9 So let's go back into the cockpit. Uh, I'm going to set the QNH now whilst I'm here. Ah, I'll check reporting. Very good. Uh, 999, and it should all be synced to all the other altimeters, so that's good. That should be indicating the elevation here, uh, which in Oslo is uh, 680 feet. So that looks about right, yeah, it's just shy of that. It's, it's 700 there at the moment. Uh, very, very good. So we've got the ATIS, and that was information. India, so information India, and the runway I'm expecting is 01 left, so I'm happy to carry on uh, with the rest of the setup. So, based on that, we'll go here to flight plan, select Oslo Gardamon, select SID, uh, 01 left, we're expecting a VIPA 1 Alpha, and we can now insert, go to the flight plan page, there's no discontinuities, we can now scroll all the way over to Luton. Uh, Luton, Star, we're expecting the Barmy 1 Alpha for ILS 25, so ILS 25, Barmy 1 Alpha, and that's going to be via the Abbott 50, transition. Hopefully 40, we'll get some ATC. 30, uh, we 20, can insert that as 10. well. John Padfield, thank you very much uh, for the £5 donation. Welcome to the only Beluga flight where the captain leaves the flight deck after landing to drive the cargo. <laughs> Well, in 24 hours time at least, I'll have a little bit of a rest there, John, but thank you very much. That is indeed the plan <laughs> for the next couple of days as well. John, thank you so much for the continued support uh, as a member as well. Uh, very kind of you to donate there. Thank you. Uh, indeed. Right. Anyway, routing's all in. No discontinuities. FMS is loaded. Usually that would come a little bit later, but it came at the stage where we, we complete the loading anyway as per the, the checklist which comes with it. The only other thing I can do at the moment here is, before I forget, is put both init A and init B. So if we go here to the next page, um, we just need to tell uh, the aircraft how much fuel we like. So if we go here to load sheet, uh, operational flight plan. Now, if you actually look at the METAR, and the, or the TAF, sorry, in Luton, you'll see there's a tempo for thunderstorms uh, pretty much from midday till, I think it was 8 o'clock in the evening here. Now, what a, a, a tempo is, it means it's not the, the forecast weather, but it means for that period of time, for less than half the time, there might be some of whatever the weather is for 30 minutes or less. So there is a chance of thunderstorms. We always presume it could be the case. Uh, so that reason I'll be taking an extra uh, 30 minutes of fuel. Now I had a fiddle with the fuel bias for this. I've got a 30% fuel bias. I did a test sector yesterday and the assumed fuel bias of 20%, which is what I think any builds recommends, it was too, um, I was burning too much fuel. Uh, the fuel burn bias of 30% is pretty much matching the burn for this sector, which I tested yesterday, so that's all good. 
Uh, ah, has oh dear, is Nightbot got the wrong route? That's my bad. I'll update that in two seconds. Um, so yeah, we'll be using this fuel figure here. 17.6 is the minimum block, uh, based on 30 minutes extra, that's 3 tonnes an hour, so we're going to call the fuel block for 20.6 tonnes, okay? So, we've got the Airbus, inverted brackets, truck, <laughs> wings, which is the gross weight we want. Uh, fuel on board, we said 20.6, and we're going to load the aircraft now. So that's now loaded that fuel and gross weight into the sim. 98.7 is the, gross, um, the zero fuel weight, so if I clear the ECAM, you can see here, yeah, there's our fuel, 20.6, so we can confirm that, 20.6 cruise flight level above max flight level, uh oh, shouldn't be, worked yesterday, uh, so 20.6, and the zero fuel weight was 98.7, As the trim for the CG is 29.6. There we are. So what we've got left to do is to take on performance. Ah, yes. So maximum flight level is 337. We're up at 34. Okay. Well, we must respect that. We can't go above that there. So what we'll do, we'll go to 320 for the cruise. And later on, we'll request a new cruise flight level. This actually happens in real life sometimes. Um, you know, the, the, the height you get filed at. Uh, might be a little bit too high, so you actually have to hold off a little bit, especially if you take extra fuel, which is exactly what we're doing here. Now, bear in mind, the, this information is from a, an A300 or an A310 FMS, so you see this extra fuel of an hour and 50, that's not correct. You know, this FMS is based off uh, an A310, A300, so just like with a real aircraft, don't use the information in the FMS regarding how much extra fuel you have, because it's, it's inaccurate, base it off kind of using six tons an hour, which is what this this aircraft roughly burns. Now, uh, just bear with me for two seconds, guys, because I completely forgot to update the operational flight plan, uh, the routing information. It still has the last flight I did uh, from Bristol to wherever we went. I can't remember, but uh, give me two seconds. I uh, don't often forget those sort of things, but uh, this one did escape me here, so the routing information is here. A little outdated. Ah, yes, 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 it's still the old one. So let me just copy and paste the new routing into Nightbot. Pro Streamer here. Uh, we're going to flight level 320, and the flight time is 1 hour 55. There we are. So Nightbot should now, if you give it a second, uh, have all the correct information for you. Uh, looking good there. Um, he's not updated Nightbot with his route. Thanks, David. <laughs> um, oh dear, yes, it's Bristol there. Uh, David, what airport are we flying from? Oslo Garda mode. So if, if you have a look at the top, you can always find your your uh, airport uh, departure and arrivals. I did at least manage to remember to update that today. Uh, right then, so ground services, loader. We can now remove the loader. Our truck, if we go to this camera, is all loaded in, look. Uh, well, imagine it's been secured by Jib. It doesn't look like it's been secured that well, but uh, the door will be shortly closing and the uh, loader is backing away. Looks like he's just put it into uh, reverse right now. Um, did we go to Carcassonne? That's it, Lauren. Yes, we did uh, Bristol Carcassonne there. Miles Peacock testing to see if uh, Nightbot is it's going to be uh, catching up with us. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Nightbot. Welcome to the party. Well done to me for not updating it. Uh, right, so the FMS is loaded. Just needs to do performance. We can continue with the flight deck preparation. As uh, so there is no no smoking or seatbelt sign uh, on the Beluga. Uh, hydraulic power panel we've checked. Servo control panel. Verify low pressure lights are illuminated. Uh, they are all illuminated on the servo control panel. External lights are configured, so I've got the nav light on the nav 2 position. That's the only one we need at this stage. It just reminds the ground crew we have uh, the power connected. Uh, pitch trim and your damper and ATS switches can come on. Only do that once the alignment's complete, which it is. But the alignment only down to 6 minutes, so it'll definitely be done by now. Um, electrical power panel, IDG disconnect switches are satisfied. Gem 1 and 2 fault lights are illuminated. They are, because we're no longer getting power from the engines at the moment, but it's an Airbus, as soon as you turn the engines on, it'll automatically switch everything for you. Uh, now we could do those engine fire, uh, engine fire and fault tests, so do a squib test, so two squib models per engine, and then you have one APU squib, and then here's the loop test, so loop A, check the ECAM, get loop A, I'm still holding the switch down, there's the engine fire, memory item, well I say memory items, it just tells you what's still in the ECAM, then let go, and then it checks, I think, second loop when you let go. 
So AP fire test. There we are. So cool. Look at how much they've modelled in this aircraft here. Uh, loop A. There we are. And engine two fire. Let go of the switch. There we are. Uh, loader is away with our truck all tied down. Uh, excellent. Uh, so, electric indicator panel, uh, check is set, we've already done that, uh, fuel panel, turn all fuel pumps on, there we are, we'll also turn on the galley shed power too, uh, it also says turn on the window heater and probe heat switches, so probe in the 737 we do have to start, but in the beluga it says turn it on now, uh, so that is all set, uh, on the air conditioning panel then, remember it does have two packs, but only one pack is used at the same time. Time. Only the cockpit is pressurised on this aircraft as well. Um, so we're not using the APU at the moment. There's no pressurisation coming into the aircraft. So that's all configured for now. And we'll also arm the emergency exit lights. So that is all pretty much set on the overhead panel. Uh, cargo compartment smoke test. So hopefully that won't turn on during the uh, flight. Otherwise that uh, truck of ours is on fire. Uh, right, that's all set. Uh, looking good. So, EFIS control panel we can now set here. So, decision height, it says set to minus five, something to do with warnings for um, uh, terrain uh, terrain uh, warnings, sorry, from the GPWS. Men mentions it in the in the checklist anyway. Um, v speeds will set. The runway QDM for us on zero 01 left is as follows 012. Uh, It's yeah, 012. Uh, altitude we can expect on our SID today a stop altitude of 7,000 feet. So we'll set that to 7,100. As a reminder, we don't have our clearance yet. So you can push that to do it in 1,000 foot increments and then push it again to set it in 100 foot increments. So there we are. That's all set on the uh, EFIS panel MCP for now. We'll have constraints on two. Um, we'll have the flight directors on both sides as well. Um, performance we need to do, landing elevation in Luton, that is, uh, double checking here, 526 feet, so put that to 500. Excellent. Uh, checking the engine instruments then, everything's looking sensible, uh, we'd cross check the altimeters, uh, interesting, yeah, it doesn't actually indicate the height on here, uh, well sure. Uh, Routing we've checked, we've already got a little information, we'll put that to map here. Altimeters are set, we'll performance very shortly. Uh, landing gear warning test, that's done, and all the instruments are set here. Uh, we're not choosing any nav aids for departure, we'll let the Airbus choose which nav aids are most suitable, does it all for you. And all we've got left then to do is the performance. Actually, that might be why I couldn't hear the ATIS, because I had the radio off. I uh, want to. No, it's still tuned. Just double check. It's definitely on now. Anyway, we've got some ATC here, which is great. So, all I'm going to do now is complete the performance, and then we'll get the clearance, and we should be all ready to go pretty much on the schedule. So, let's go here to uh, load sheets, send to take off performance, all the, uh, the, the weights, gross weights, all that information. So, we're in Oslo as Echo November Golf Mike, and we're departing off 01 left. We go here to 80s request. It should fetch the weather from Active Sky for us and calculate all our takeoff performance. Quite a long runway here, so it's probably going to be flaps up with the slats at 15 as, us uh, as usual. So QH 9 and 9 and 9, it's a wet runway. Uh, temperature's 8 degrees, so you should probably have engine anti ice on for departure. I'm going to put engine out wing. Let's go for engine only. Well, in the 737, we would select engine and wing uh, in icing conditions, which we are technically in. Um, let's put engine and wing. Uh, takeoff weight 118.9, flat 15, air conditioning will be on. We'll try for a flex temperature. So let's compute this, see what it says. Uh, John, you've got to love the Airbus. Just completed a flight from Riga to South End and managed to have a shave, wash, and haircut in the cruise. <laughs> the 77 under stuck updated heading bug. Unbelievable. <laughs> right, so what does this say for us? Uh, it says we can take off. Uh, up to our maximum takeoff weight, V speeds of 162, 164, 166. A flex of 51, 
and a trim of one unit down. Now this is why I like this air but so you can actually set the trim before the engine starts, which you can't do in the, in the 320. So something less to forget. Uh, v speeds then, uh, V2 we need to set, so the other speed should translate into the FMS if we send it. So send data to the FMS and to the bug card. So that should be all done. Remember the bug card is the primary reference, but you can still update the V speeds into this so they're correct. Uh, so, performance page is... no, it's takeoff page we need, isn't it? So, 162, 164, V2 is 166. We'll set that on the MCP here. There we are, 166. I can preset that, and what I'm then going to do is actually bug 220 knots, because um, there's no profile mode on this aircraft. It only has sort of vertical speed and level change as the pitch modes. It's an ATP2 here, so what I want to do is at 1,000 feet is just select level change let the aircraft accelerate to 220 knots. That's why I preset that there. Uh, so that's done. Uh, trim is set and then the flex temperature is 51 degrees. So let's go here to flex uh, 51 degrees. 97.8. So take our thrust is calculated. Let's get that AP up and running now. We'll switch on and start. Bring up AP on the ECAM. So you can uh, monitor the starts, recall this. There we are, it's booting up. There's the M1 increasing and the EGT. Have a little listen. Everything's all pretty much closed back here. Loadmaster's happy that the truck is secure. And we'll tune up uh, all the way centre. Good afternoon. I'll pack up one Julian Sounds mic good. if it's stand through at two zero three with information India request the IFR clearance solution. Excellent, so APU's all up and running. Uh APU's available. So just make sure the, the APU generator's on. It is. We can disconnect the external power. And let's go over here to ground services. We can take the chocks away, external power. And also make sure all the doors are closed. There we are. Jim's run down to shut the hatch. Chocks are away. Okay, better push back connected. There's the one for the test sector. So I'm just going to connect first. Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. There's a young Norwegian lady talking. Excellent. Ah, yes, Andy, don't make. Don't forget to uh, make sure the doors are closed. God, thank you for reminding me. Yes, if you don't do that, you can have pressurization problems. So, a couple of things to check. Make sure that door is closed. It is. Let's close the trap door as well, which I think uh, uh, try not to break to, my fingers uh, off uh, here. There's the truck. Like, Bye-bye, uh, truck. I'll have a safe well. journey. Oh, do I tr I'm I'll just basically just bash myself on the head <laughs> with the door. And then make sure you close this door as well, otherwise the aircraft the cockpit won't be pressurized. Done. <laughs> Cheers, Andy. And again, I must stress thank you so much, Andy M71, who's very uh, kindly uh, giving away six, a copy uh, on behalf of himself for the, for the channel. Uh, uh, you know, he's donated to me one, three, to, to host a giveaway. All doors and hedges you know, are ghost, ready to connect. Uh, so you've got a chance of uh, winning this aircraft later. Clearance as soon as this is done, and we're all uh, ready to go. Ah, yes. Slight issue with the tug at the moment. Uh, it's the wrong side. Why has it changed the tug style? It had a different one yesterday, the one that actually sort of fits under the beluga. Uh, this the one does not fit at all. That one for me, <laughs> hey, that will do. One Heading on, report to Chief Pilot, yes. Uh, was there one <laughs> I jet or jet at the best. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello to you. Yeah, star from the 100 with Devon and Lima. All right, let's get our clearance now. Our centre. Hello, it's Alpha 5 Bravo Echo We're on stand 206 in Oslo Garden Mode Information India QNH 999 and departure clearance to London Luton, please. Number two, 
I saw a top star based on gross weight. Ah, yeah, that'd be interesting because on my test sector yesterday, I didn't take the extra fuel, so I must have been quite close to the crossover. Because yesterday I had the one I always get for the mod. This loops a bit one out for departure on way through one left. Initial climb seven thousand feet. Squawk two one one six. Out there one thousand seven. Out there is one thousand November. Read back correct. So should be us next. Alpha can find Bravo Echo, you're set to London Luto, we put one out for the departure, run a zero one left. You should go M7000, squawk five six zero four. It's London Luton, Vipper one out for departure, zero one left, climb seven thousand feet, squawk five six zero four, Alpaca five Bravo Echo. Alpaca five Bravo Echo, read back correct. Excellent, so seven thousand feet uh, squawk, so we have to go down here to the radio tuning panel. Control panels. very good afternoon, uh, five, Transavia two six, to go. Function three eight in all the loop. We're not using any courses for the ILS later. And uh, we just need to put the taxi uh, inside. Uh, ready. To London, Newton. So, uh, let's have a look here. So we are on stand 206 here on the cargo apron, probably push back to face south to exit via Alpha 3. Very short taxi for us, very conveniently placed the cargo apron here in Oslo Garden, but uh, we'll either go out via November or Mike to Alpha 2. Uh, we can take an Alpha 2 intersection uh, and then Alpha 1 will be here. I want to go full length today with the uh, take off at such high V-speeds as well. Here's our SID then, initial climb clearance to 7,000 feet. We've just been cleared on the Vipper 1 Alpha. Our routing then is to climb straight ahead to Golf Mike 436, max 230 knots. So let's go to the flight plan page here. Oh god, it's an Airbus and everything is opposite. You press down to go up. <laughs> Damn thing. <laughs> so, uh, Golf Mike 436, max 230 knots. We can select that here. You see it says 230 knots, but remember, you have to comply with that manually. Profile. There's no profile mode, so make sure you don't bug above 230 until you pass that waypoint. Golf Mike 437, Golf Mike 439, Golf Mike 614, Nanon Torp. There we are. So it's all coded. There's Torp, and we should be up at our maximum cruise level of 320. It's as high as we can go at the moment due to our gross weight. So that's all coded correctly. Information is an RNAV1 SID. Surveillance radar required due to simulated, simulate simultaneous parallel departures. Uh, change to approach frequency is only sensor on my own online at the moment. You get your cruise altitude from Oslo approach and ADP2 for departure on the climb out. So I'll accelerate uh, to a thousand feet AGL. So when we get to around 1700 feet, guys, we'll engage the automation of my hand fly. Uh, we'll bug up at uh, that, that height and I'll select climb thrust at around 1500 feet AGL as well. So it'll be around 2200 feet. Uh, right, so we're all ready to go. What I'm going to do now before I push back is put the transporter to out off and we'll request push and start. Alpaca 1 Alpha Victor, push and start approved, QNH 9099. Push start approved and uh, QNH 9099 and Alpaca 1 Alpha Victor. Sounded like Young AV. And Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo Stand 206, request push and start in sequence. Alpaca, fire bravo, echo, push and start with uh, QNH 9099 and caution to accompany to the right, pushing. Uh, push and start approved, Alpaca, fire bravo, echo. So, what, I'm not sure which direction, but. Uh, to we'll go. Go. Front to go. Front to go, to fit, please show me where you want to go. I'm going to push a little bit longer approved, just to make sure I can get out of that exit here. It'll be quite interesting to see. Um, to uh, approve and uh, QNH 999. Outback of 5 Bravo Echo, what uh, direction do you want us to face? Outback of 5 Bravo Echo, are you able to push straight? Uh, a firm Outback of 5 Bravo Echo. That's perfect because there's going to be more of you, so push straight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Uh, that's actually quite a normal taxi. Uh, uh, sorry, a normal pushback there. So they can push you straight back and then you just turn. That actually happens at a lot of UK airports. Toe connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking. Oh, old horses, love. I need to do a few more things yet. So, uh, we've already done that. Just making sure everything's done here for mess entry is done. So, pushback flow is done. So, go to the ECAM page for if all doors are closed. Hello, Paco. One just bike. Are you able to continue a straight push? 
negative, but I am doing a short push to the uh, left. So doors closed, uh, all green. Uh, beacon light can come okay, on. Roger, Mike, Roger, just a question of the Amazon O2 left. Uh, there we had a few bleed on as well. There we are, lots of duct pressure. Looking good. Uh, I'll keep an eye on the traffic. Uh, uh, Alpaca, one to it, Mike. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Uh, Wilhelm, who is that with the Alpaca Airways BA146? I want that livery. Um, when I next fly, I'll link it for you. There's a CSL, but if you update your CSL pack, you should be able to get that uh, livery for you. That's all thanks to Jamlin, one of my members. Excellent. Uh, Wilhelm, you're going to be good. So, uh, let's put the edges start to A. And uh, let's give it a whirl. To the base. Nice. Ed two, twenty percent. We're looking for. We had one rotation already. A little pressure's building. There's twenty percent. Comes the fuel. There's ignition. Uh, Amazon, uh, uh, Alpaca one unit, Mike. You want me to stop? Uh, There's our truck. <laughs> yeah, Amazon one Delta uh, November. You'll need to stop that. I'll put up one two in like. Looks like a good start on engine stop number two. Uh, I'll probably still get out of the way as soon as possible. I'll pack a one two in like. This is my mess, it's okay. <laughs> It's looking all stable here. Now I'm not sure when the engines actually stabilise when you when you actually know here, but Ed two looks pretty Operation stable. Operation complete. Well. Set parking brake. Absolutely. Let's start now. Engine number one. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. There's Ed two. So one two. Where can I get the truck, Steve? 1975. So the creator of the truck. Um, uh, I haven't actually asked if he wants me to release it publicly uh, yet. If he doesn't mind, what I'll do after the stream, I'll pin it as a comment so you can download it. But it's uh, one of the members of the channel very kindly made it for me. Two thousand feet, connect one zero two with one eight three five. I'll back one off the microphone. I just angel triple seven got released in Microsoft Flight Simulator. No offence to Captain Sim, but that is perhaps not aimed at uh, uh, the sort of content I like to create. Maybe a little bit too arcadey for us that one. Since it's actually based off the default 747, I've been advised. So it's disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Good to you. Good to you. Happy Constitution Day. <laughs> there we go. Uh, right, so two good starts. Just wait till that monstrous tugs away. We've got aircraft everywhere. <laughs> and I on Unicom, absolutely not. We've got up to ATC today. There's our bypass pin, excellent. We can now complete steep before taxi flow. So I have to start flow. Uh, up here, ignition switch we move to off. AP master switch can come to off as well. Uh, so that should shut down very shortly. Engine anti ice on for departure, if you remember rightly. So that is all set. Speed brake is armed. Rudder trim is set to. Zero, there it is, set to zero. Flaps, we're going to have flaps up with slats in 15. Trim is set for departure. Uh, one unit down, and we're all ready to go for the full taxi flight. We do the flight control check on the taxi house. This is an Airbus. So we are, flaps indicating 15 to zero. We're already to taxi. So basically here, facing east at the moment. Back in airways in Oslo. Just checking the truck, make sure it's all good. <laughs> I keep trying to go to gym seat, but I've assigned that view to the truck view. Hopefully the Iraqi Airways guy will be ready very shortly. We can always go the other way. So we can go um, left to exit via Alpha 4 if this guy's not ready yet. 
Norway control the most Scandinavian cruise pilot to a play at Land Airport radio check. In the other grass, look. Scrimmage 252, pull 90, hello. Uh, Frank, do you want the speed breaker to 737 on departure? No, don't do that on the engine. I should get a take off warning. Command, it was an engine and wing NCI, so I did it for four minutes, but it was a What do we do here? Yeah, it's just on, I think, and then you have different two modes, but you're quite right. Clutter 1, Gavik, my Big 5 1 off with pressure, 7,000 feet, squawk 6257. Command, 2, 10, 4, correction, 295. Try to get there, guys. What is that, remember, Ben? Alpaca 5, Bravo, Echo, standing by for taxi. Say again. Alpaca 5, Bravo, Echo, standing by for taxi. It's going to be 295 with this main stock. Controller's gone. Uh, Screaming 295, Pitching Stop, Breaking, Engineer, Nightmare, uh, do you just check a test the floor with chains or do you trust your parking brake? The parking brake could be fine. Question 295. Hello, back at Fibra Bank, for taxi traffic on your right. Uh, Roger, happy to taxi via Alpha 4. Kilo. Or Kilo, sorry. <laughs> That's what happens at other airports if it's busy, if someone's blocking you. Uh, let's see, I think uh, Amazon uh, one, one Delta November, but that is. He's going backwards still, so. Be fine. <laughs> we'll be back in two minutes, Amazon 1 Delta Number. Let's go. Back at Fabra, there'll be a two minutes delay due to traffic on your right, and you'll have a push on your left as well now. Ah, okay, hold position. Uh, I'll back at Fabra, okay. Alright, if it's someone pushing to my left, then yes, then I am blocked, but uh, what we could have done is gone out by Kilo the long way around. But no, I think we can do about that. We've got aircraft everywhere. <laughs> blocked in. Into the game. Anyway, there she is, all ready to go. Good land runway 35 with the 18 Lima. Get it in 252. Such an awesome model, like, I can't stress how much I, I like not just the Beluga, but any builds uh, uh, as a whole. I was watching a bit of their dev video yesterday on YouTube. And just everything they're doing just ticks all the boxes. The aircraft are incredibly well simulated, well modelled. All the other uh, Lucas are already out. I know that. It's a little bit unlucky. I got, I got hemmed in here by uh, an Amazon Air and a, a 146. <laughs> And this thing is exactly economical. We're sat here burning, what's that? A little over three tons an hour? Or a little under three tons an hour, just sat here. Look. 1500 each. Andrew looks like my forehead. Romeo, Papa, and a short. Uh, Listen, I'm back as expected, still on the apron. We were ready to taxi five minutes ago, but we've been hemmed in. Five, I can remember, stuck one, two, ready to push the five. But they're all taking ages to taxi. Right now, five, I can remember, push and start approving engine. Right now, right now. A bit unlucky then. Might have to top up the fuel line, no. Well, I'll take an extra 30 minutes. November, one, seven, it's over from top of the front. November 17, try to contact you, descend via surf, a double one two zero. Sorry about, sorry about that, uh, we are started, now we go to one two zero November 1-2-0. Wiss 1-8, leave our country back and taxi. Let's go guys, let's go. Let's wait, let's keep with a 1-8 Lima. Alpaca 1-8 Lima, 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 Al
What's the hurry? Fuel crit school? Well, no, fuel fine. It's an extra 30 minutes, so an extra. Uh, stand by, uh, took an I'll extra three tons. Back. But I kind of like to use that three tons to sit in a hole to wait a thunderstorm blow over and lose it, not to one wait one here. <laughs> the 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 same in real life as well. Uh, plus, I'm sure you guys would like me to uh, go for like. Uh, Marcel, can we see inside the cargo bay? Have a quick look here. What's me? It's quite a nice little bottle. Should be in here but during this stage of flight as well, unfortunately, because it's uh, not pressurized. Packer Logistics, four, yeah, four, as we said at the start of the street. Yeah, Bravo, Echo, follow the traffic to right to point one zero one left. And follow the uh, traffic to the right to one point zero one left, out Packer 5 Bravo again. Okay. Finally on our way, so he's turning. At least the uh, parking brake. Uh, there is a config check, five, like five, in the NG, so you can advance all the way forward. Look, no takeoff config warning. And uh, let's go. Five, five, level three, six, zero, Packer 1 Alpha Victor. Norway Control, Scandinavian 252 here, just to make sure is runway 01 left in use at Garden 1 airport. Let's go in 252 again. I did say follow that traffic, so we'll go that way. To make sure is runway 01 left in use at Garden 1 airport. Let's go in 252, 0 1 left. There it is. What a beast. Complete Commander Jedi Hope, but maybe I would have to take the ties. Right, let's do the before takeoff checklist then. So, taxi clearance, what I should have done before we started taxi. Oh no, I did. It does oh, to, uh, taxi, I'll turn the turn off lights on as well to increase visibility. Uh, brakes are checked already to make sure they work. There you are, so they are working. Uh, flight controls then to select flight I controls. Care, one, two, five, the ECAM. So let's check the elevator. Uh, follow up. Pull down, check the rudders. Now, unfortunately, I've had to disable the Z axis on my joystick to work, but I'll quickly go right and left because it is linked to the tiller at the moment, so they are working. And here's the aileron, full right and full left, and the spoilers are extending as well. So, those flight controls checked, so water brake to max. Seat brakes armed, transponder code is set. Weather radar will turn on as well. And that does work. So I was testing it yesterday and I saw weather displaying on Active Sky. So put that over to System 1. We'll definitely need that today with Thundersource forecast. It's going proper full leg flow all the way around from 1. Which is. You just say follow, but uh, you never know. <laughs> Taxi golf hold shot. Horrific taxi, completely missed the line there. Uh, but ready to go. Sorry, the golf holding up in November. So there to to run out of the taxi, continue papa and the left of my taxi door went alpha two. Left on Mike and Alpha two another golf. A back up on zero five um set my break. Stand by. Amazon Air one Delta November line of voyage zero one left. Damn it. <laughs> uh, Amazon one left, Amazon one Delta November. Tried to get ahead of Amazon there. Amazon one zero five didn't Mike. work. Yeah, the traffic <laughs> crossing from your left to right, push instead of breaking edge one nine. Right, hold it out for two. Cap one hold. After traffic crossing, push start. Approved. 
Shut off a little bit soon. Uh, this scene is from Aerosoft, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just so sorry. Alright, park break is set. Uh, passing 5,000, I'll pack a 1 Juliet mic. I'll pack a 1 Juliet mic, identified climb flight level 280. Climb flight level 280, I'll pack a 1 Juliet mic. Beast. Outback of 5 Bravo Echo, Alpha 2, Bravo right, 0 1 left, we're ready for the check. Outback of 5 Bravo Echo, Alpha 2, behind the parting, 737, line up and wait, run at 0 1 left. Uh, behind the parting, Abbas at 737, line up and wait, 0 1 left, Outback of 5 Bravo Echo. Perfect, so we've been clear to line up and wait behind. Zero one He's left. on his way, so we'll have our lights on, take off here as well. Ignition, continuous ignition is required, that's only when it's heavy rain, or expected heavy rain on turns. Backs off, not required, TCAS, TAR rain. Left on November, taxi kilo and hold short of Mike, right outside the kid Which is here. And we'll have a little bit of um, nav mode, that's it. Be clear to line up and wait, so let's go. The background music off. Uh, so, takeoff profile. Um, we'll set Togo. Takeoff thrust hit. The engines do take a very long time to spool up in the Beluga. I think a little bit too slow. Um, but eventually, be at our takeoff thrust setting in around 80 knots. Um, remember, the fuel speed's very high because we have the flaps up, but the slats are in 15 degrees. Uh, slats are 15 degrees. We're going to accelerate, maintain around V2 plus 20. Uh, for the initial climb out to where 1,000 feet AGL, which will be around 1,600 feet. Uh, we'll then bug up to 220 knots by selecting level change, retract the flaps, and then we'll select climb for us at around 1,500 feet AGL. There we are. Awesome stuff. 500 people have tuned in for the takeoff. That's wicked. If you are enjoying it so far, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button to take our lovely Alpaca Logistics truck to Luton and uh, we'll be continuing over at Fly Deck to Sim Gaming. The link to that stream is in the pinned comment above. And don't forget you've got a chance of winning the Alpaca Balu uh, the uh, sorry the Beluga uh, by any bills later on after landing in Luton. All thanks to uh, Andy M71 one of my members. Well, rests up to take off it is then. <laughs> the Amazon. Good, good, good. Yeah, we could have been airborne 10 minutes earlier if we got a little bit unlucky there with the pushbacks. Right now, Friday, I could have ever continued Mike to Alpha 2. Continue Mike to Alpha 2, right now, five seconds, man. Let's give in to five text, continue Papa, left on Mike to Alpha 2. We've got Transavias, we've got Ryan Airs, we've got Mike Everyone here today. Hopefully some ATC and Luton. Beautiful. Is there a clock? There is David. <laughs> Ready to set. <laughs> He's just making sure there's separate uh, there's sufficient separation. Remember the V2 is preset. Jason, what's on board the truck? Air. <laughs> Let's go. I'm back at 5 Bravo Echo, wind 250 degrees, 3 knots, run at 0 1 left, clear for takeoff. 0 1 left, clear takeoff, out back at 5 Bravo Echo. Tokens in chat, ladies and gentlemen, I'm parking brake is released. Uh, and, line up uh, let's left, select yeah. run. 40%. Stabilised there, push Toga, set take off thrust. Very slow to spool up, they will come. How many feel we burn a ton? You can see it on the engine, it's just down there. Dots checked, releasing forward pressure. Amazon Air 1 dump to November, report passing level. The 
Um, so the nose wants to come up, it's skipping a bit. V1, rotate. Positive climb, gears up. On to the flight <laughs> Feet, so we're going to select level change, aircraft standard uh, okay, X08 to 230 knots, select flaps up. And we're going to maintain 230 knots, remember that's our first speed restriction. We're climbing to an altitude of uh, 7,000 feet here, so we don't set standard. And just climb for us to come in. There's a left turn. Anti-ice on because we're just about to go yeah, into clouds. Three, six, four, four, two, one, four, and we'll get the autopilot engaged. And we anti-ice can come off. Engine anti-ice is on. Climbing very nicely at the moment. We're approaching. Up back at five, bravo, coming forward for passing level. Up back at five, bravo, passing four thousand eight hundred feet for seven thousand. Up back at five, bravo, identify flight level three four zero. Climb flight level. I request flight level three two zero. Just a little bit heavy for our fire crews then. Flight flight level 320, Alpaca 5, Bravo, okay. So 320 is set, and we can set standards. And we can go down to 250 knots, we passed that first speed restriction, 250 below 100. And let's complete now the after takeoff checklist. So, after takeoff checklist, speed brakes retracted. Lights, landing and nose lights can come off. Oh no, landing lights may be left on, taxi and turn off lights off. So off, off, which has come off now as well as we come from clouds. Uh, ignition off if required for departure. Packs are already on, APU is off, and let's check the pressurisation system. So diff pressure is increasing, there's no number between 0 and 8, but it is increasing as is the cabin at, or cockpit altitude, I should say, because there's no cabin pressurisation, and the cabin altitude is around 1,000 feet. So that's it, checks complete. We're on our way, guys. Clock's running. Did remember it, look. Elapsed time is three minutes, look. <laughs> there we are, on our way. And there's flight level 100. It's gonna climb at around 270 knots. Remember, this only has a, an MMO of decimal 70. So we're gonna do 270. Maintain this until we're doing decimal 68. And we'll do our pre-cruise checks now. So fuel, we've used 1,800 kilos. And remember, don't use the fuel burn figures in the FMS, they will not be accurate because they're based off an A300 or A310. Uh, lights can come off. APU is off. Pressurisation, we've just checked, is as we'd expect it to be. And there's no seatbelts, no passengers. Let's check a recall. We push this. Normal, excellent. There we are, pre cruise checks complete. On our way to Luton. Yeah, truck's still there, it's not fallen out. Well, I'll say fallen out the back, it would have fallen out the front. Oh, we would have seen it if it rolled forward. <laughs> oh yeah, set gear lever to off, thank you. That isn't actually included in the checklist that comes with the old uh, beluga. So it's easy to forget. Jamlin, fly by view please. Coming up, sir. Lauren props to the controller, uh, handling a busy airport and all the Norwegian centre traffic, I know, amazing they came on today. And it's the Const Constitution Day as well, but thank you to all my Norwegian uh, subscribers and members that told me about this day, I didn't know much about it until uh, I was told. There you are, look, you can push that button to match the heading bug. Just a minute, it's a gold wind, two five, three, 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 three. CTA on here, it should be too far off, uh, where is this, on the flight?
flight plan page. And that's saying Luton at 17.38, so about an hour and a half from now, with no delays. Quite a few of us uh, going to Luton. Should get in nicely. Uh, Matt Osborne, what sim brief OFP layout do you use? Uh, I use the profile for the Beluga and uh, the Lido operational flight plan format. Uh, so uh, uh, contains Paradox Bob's before the Paradox Bob's don't go before that day. Commander Jedi from waiting for those tyres to explode. No comment. They've deflated, don't worry. Uh, when we get to um, Luton as well, we'll do the whole unloading and we'll very kindly do the, uh, we'll then do the giveaway, which is very, uh, very much, again, I must keep reminding everyone that uh, Andy very kindly donated. I'm quite good initially, but now it's beginning to become a, a victim of its profile. So the parasitic drag now is really building up full climb for us. I'm only able to sort of maintain 2,000 feet per minute, and that's due to the fact this has the profile of a, a brick wall. No wonder oh, I'm going to slow down. Uh, flight Zim guy, what's our flight time for today? Uh, total flight time is an hour 50, hour 55. I do anticipate perhaps some delays uh, and viewers going to Luton. Hopefully we'll get some ATC. Uh, okay. After the bits kick me for K364 and be back right break break in November 17, K9 from the Tiramanu, sorry about that. Um, I mean I was a bit shocked that I thought you were going to do truck sim today just because I thought today was the 18th. That is tomorrow. I did think about doing both streams one after the other. Um, but I was trying to think of what we could do in the next ETS2 stream, and I thought, well, now we're back in the UK, let's try, if in one stream, to try and visit all the cities we haven't been to yet, which is around, I think it was 10 in total. I reckon, you know, trying to do five or six jobs, we'll be able to visit all those cities. We'll probably do a three or four hour ETS2 stream tomorrow. That will be starting at 8 pm. Uh, over at Flight Next UK. Uh, that flight of guy, what if you drive the truck you just delivered? I would love to, uh, but unfortunately the texture options that we had was for a Mercedes uh, Actros, I think it's pronounced. I don't have that on my ETS2 uh, Alpaca Logistics Company. We have two trucks over on the second channel. We have a Volvo and a Scania. Now the Scania is my main driving truck now, which is our most powerful one in the uh, fleet it has uh, six wheels, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we hired someone called Dirk to drive the Volvo around. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully after tomorrow's stream, we'll have a bit more money to buy another garage, perhaps for a third truck and buy a third person. Aviation, what do you think about Infinite Flight? Never played it, never flown on it. Uh, Aviation ZY, I think it's perhaps a little bit more arcade even. What you get in X-Main or, or Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, and I'm sure it's um, a great sim for, for those in like that sort of flight and stuff. Trade off for Amazon 1000 average increase speed. Russell, I saw your comment there. Uh, I'm sure you're trying to, to try to fly off. There. I maybe think it's fine, but obviously that comes up with the D word as a profanity, as does the S word too, so brilliant. <laughs> uh, Lauren, visit all the cities, but without any speeding tickets challenge 2021. Thank you. Was it Dirk the tug driver? No, uh, yes, perhaps we've had Dirk as a tug driver as well. We've had Dirk, Dave, and Dick, and we've also had. Uh, uh, I'm very sure it's Dirk. I can't remember the name of the guy on the ETS2. <laughs> Russell, I'm stuffed then. Russell, I'm, I'm sure you're. I know you've been here quite a bit uh, as well, but you can imagine some people that join the chat try and say all sorts there. So uh, it's very, very strict to our uh, night bots. Because I like to keep the, key, the stream PC here. Especially as I, you know, I do a lot of streams on behalf of other little 
uh, software developers, when I had the thing with Microsoft as well, want someone to think blinding on a stream, if you know, it's a family friendly stream. So yes, uh, you might be trying to say something very innocent, and, uh, and uh, as most of you are, sometimes it'll it won't be too long what's being said. Anyway, we've converted over to Mac now. Uh, let's go up to 6H, which will be our cruise level. Still in the climb here, we're burning, look at that, oh, nine tons of fuel an hour. That's our current fuel flow, wow. We'll definitely, we'll definitely do some fuel checks in this aircraft here. It's a brief profile, remember. I had to cheek uh, from the recommended one. Uh, based on the test sector yesterday and the fuel burn, I found that 30 was very close. Uh, fuel buys plus 30 percent. Now this figure, we get this figure on the real flight plans as well. So in our fleet, 737s, and on the old aircraft, they'll have a slightly higher fuel bias because they do burn a little bit more fuel. The aircraft that have slightly older engines, and it's based off feedback. You know, they they record everything so they can see on a sector how much fuel burned compared to how it should be, and they'll, they'll adjust the bias. That's the one that just gets a little bit of wind noise. Uh, John Padfield, I have a question for Shoe Smith was flying the Zebo the other day and one of the waypoints in the FMC was in brackets. Does that mean anything? Well, there's a Zebo thing. Uh, that means it's a real thing. It's a conditional waypoint or a conditional requirement. Um, so you have to be at that point and the aircraft will either comply with it. Uh, but you can't modify uh, conditional waypoints. But they are a real, a real waypoint. Uh, Matt, sorry if Denmark is letting you down the country, the country off it. Uh, well, we're in the wrong country for that, but uh, we're still with Norwegian control here, but the ATC has been fantastic uh, so far. The, uh, one controller has provided us ATC from start to finish. A lot of traffic, he's dealt with everyone coming out of guard mode, he's joining me on the stream to loot it. Other aircraft inbound to guard mode, aircraft uh, in the, his airspace as well, he's doing a fantastic job. There's flight all 300. Almost at uh, MMO, can't go any quicker. Yeah, 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 yeah. With Stretching Hotel, you're number two for going to break, break with six, three, Fox of Tread, if you can't begin. With zero six three Fox Trot K two on slow go cup to Delta departure only three. Uh, thanks, we were wondering why we couldn't do anything with it. Well that would be the reason John zero. can't change those ones. And we say six three for the score five seven one zero. Uh, Paul, thanks, I forgot, uh, flight to Sim at Stan Style S22, put a hold into Abbott, next waypoint is Barkway 16, so that's a conditional waypoint, so you probably have to have been at a certain height at that point, it won't allow me to delete the hold and select next waypoint, that is true, you can't line select key those waypoints and bring uh, them up, it's impossible. Confirm, uh, yeah, it's impossible. So now approaching our cruise level, just uh, monitor, make sure the aircraft level's up, do a fuel check at Oslo Torp, it wasn't too long ago, we went to the airport there. Although I'll, I'll upset some Norwegians by saying Oslo Torp though, because it is technically a lot of airlines call it Torp, Oslo. And Will I've just bought the 742 over the pond, I'm coming in from San Jose and it's been pretty good freeway scenery, you should maybe check it out, I'll have a look at that now, but uh, not much flying in the other ones. There we are, 320, in the cruise, and one's reducing. Excellent news of you. I mentioned probably a week ago that I'm going flying um, next month, which is great. Not only that, I now actually have three flights on my roster. 
I've got three flights coming up in the next um, four weeks. Really looking forward to it. I'm in the sim this week as well. So I've got my sim um, three takeoff and landing requirements, even though I don't need to do it. I went flying about um, six weeks ago for the, the ghost flight. Um, but they, they just put you in the sim anyway. So I've got my, my three takeoff and landings in 90 days. Um, to do, and then I've got. Uh, I'm not going to disclose where I'm going. Thank you for respecting that as well. But um, one of the flights is to the Canaries, and uh, one to Spain, one to Portugal. Um, so uh, I doubt they'll be very busy, but um, yeah, it's great to see today. If you have a look on flight radar as well, a lot of aircraft flying around again from the UK because today, if you're outside the UK and you didn't know, um, we allowed foreign travel again. We can now meet up with other people indoors. Uh, right, let's do a little fuel check and talk. There it is, uh, So we should have burned four tons of fuel at this stage. Uh, fuel use so far is just shy of that, 3.8 tons, so it's pretty close. And we should have 13.5 on board. So remember we took an extra three tons. Uh, so I only expect 16.5 on board, and we have 16.6, and the fuel burns as expected, we've saved about 100 kilos or so, even with the fact that we were holding uh, for quite a while to taxi, so that's as expected. Uh, next fuel check we'll do it around 45 minutes, we're on the hour, look at Gollum, and see to make sure it's all as we'd expect it to be. That's a little bit loud, isn't it? Uh, it's any build, so of course they've modelled everything, including the fact, like in the Zebo mod, that you can control the VATS in volume here. It's amazing. You can do that and it stops the radio. There we are. Should be a little bit more acceptable for you. Keep an eye out for Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, ladies and gentlemen, if ADC calls. Andrew Noble 70, what airport is Echo November Golf Mike? It's Oslo Gardamon. I mean, why in the Zebo TCAS doesn't work but on the 737 MAX it doesn't? Well, I don't think you should be using that 737 MAX, I've heard it's a bit dodgy, uh, but it works completely fine in the Zebo mod. Uh, it should be showing you traffic. Uh, make sure you have on the EFIS panel, the on the range selector, the a little button that says TFC, make sure you push that in to make sure traffic displays on the ND. And Golan, thank you very much for your continued support. You've got your second stripe on your emoji. Now, I don't know how I can't remember how many months it was three or six months, but thank you very much, Pan, for the time you spent as a member and supporting the, the channel. Very much appreciated. I try and see who has what rank and uh, we have a few members now who've been a member for over two years and they have the special alpaca wearing a pilot's hat emoji. You can see many of those around. Uh, list them in 15 degree roll mode. Yes, I'm not sure how it works in the Airbus. I'd like to think it does it all for you. You know, I guess in heading select in normal, it'll bank beyond that, but. Excellent. Tim Fraser, there's one. Two years. Thanks a lot, buddy, for the continued support. Uh, David Moore, how do you get top of climb wind and top of climb ice on the top left of your sim brief flight plan? Uh, look at the airlines available. Choose one of the airlines which will give you that option. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, is the weather radar modelled, said Federico? It is, in fact. I should probably put that tilt down slightly because it's still tilting up into the upper atmosphere. Uh, and it was working yesterday on the test sector. Um, it was picking up a little bit of weather on Active Sky. On Active Sky, you want to have the setting on now. Uh, previously, I think they might have updated it. There was a sit setting in Active Sky which okay, says one, two, three, it says if CBs are forecast on the Metar, don't draw thunderstorms. And when I first got Active Sky, I had that setting off. And every time it just said CB, it used to give us. You know, ridiculously massive thunderstorms uh, everywhere. Now, no, CB uh, can, can be usually associated with the development uh, of a thunderstorm, but okay. usually isn't a sign of them. However, I think they've adjusted it now slightly. So, I actually have the setting now where it says 
if they prevent CBs, uh, prevent thunderstorms when CBs are forecast, I actually have that off now. Um, so you do get a, a little bit of more turbulence, a little bit more unstable air associated with CBs uh, without getting ridiculous thunderstorms everywhere. It used to be like you look at your ND and there'd just be blobs of thunderstorms, isolated thunderstorms within 60 miles would be about 20. Uh, but I think they've adjusted to being a little bit more realistic now. Hi Dave, hope you're well. He says on the Zebo 737, I sometimes forget to switch the bank angle from 30 to 10 and I notice that when in the cruise. Is that a big deal? Yeah, with Doesn't that really matter? We do want to be selecting it in the Zebo mod, I'm sorry, in the Zebo and the real 737. Because if you revert to heading select, uh, if say ATC tell you to maintain a heading, um, and you bank perhaps at a high, if you're close to your maximum cruise level and you bank uh, over a certain amount, as you turn the aircraft, it, it, the angle of attack increases on the wing, on the, and the point at which the angle of attack of the aircraft stalls is lowered as well, and, and it might meet, and what also can happen is the um, airflow of the wing, it can go supersonic, and it's called Mac Buffett, uh, as the lift increases and you start getting this and that also decreases the angle at which the aircraft can stall. Um, so you, we limit the bank angle to 10 degrees in heading select to stop that from happening. Now LNAV has a built-in system which will ensure that it'll never bank to an amount which is close to that. So in LNAV it might bank beyond 10 degrees um, but it'll never get to the point where Mac Buffett can occur and can potentially stall. Um, so uh, the angle of bank in the, in the 737 at 10 degrees, the only modes that will respect that is heading select and if you use Vorlock to intercept a localizer, it'll, it'll, it'll comply with the um, uh, angle of, of bank select and whatever's set there. Thanks Steve for dealing with that. Um, welcome on board right rudder, uh, glad you're enjoying the content. Uh, don't you ever use left rudder? <laughs> I'm um, you'll get invited to our members only discord. Enjoy using your custom notes to chat as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Flight Sim Guy, how come you can't go to Mac Decimal 7.7 now? That is because we are in a beluga, yeah, which has the profile of a, a house. And if we look here uh, to your limit speeds, you'll find a v uh, MMO, look, uh, Mac 4.7. That is the MMO, so we're just below that at Decimal 6.8. Uh, not a quick aircraft. That is why. Go on that to, to fold in. Massive nerd movies. What's the highest number of flights you completed in one day? Uh, four. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes you four sectors a day. Depends on uh, where you're based and where you're going, but uh, frequently too. Roll on the supersonic beluga, <laughs> said Russell. You imagine. We go up to 340, yeah, I wonder. Now, interestingly, I wonder if you can still use the FMS to calculate your maximum cruise level in Beluga, seeing it's based off a different aircraft. I can't remember what page it is. Could take off uh, runway 35 then, just confirm you want to report 4000 with the F3 aircraft. Optimum 335, okay, well, probably want to wait a little bit longer. The maximum, not sure where you find that information. Jamie, what's the highest flight level you've flown? Uh, flight level 410. Uh, don't often go up there, but when it's uh, less than 50 passengers, easily achievable. Uh, List of in cruise mode. Ah, uh, yes. There we are. 98.1 is the maximum. Trust a bit now. things I wish Vatsim could uh, fine-tune um, is, is the volume between different users. You can hear it's um, some guys very quiet and very loud here. Okay, it's going to be a problem. You don't need to call when you reach a flight level. Uh, when ready, decent flight level 1, 2, 0. Uh, Pan, you mentioned earlier that you were climbing slightly because parasitic drag was kicking in hard. Is that because you were speeded up or does it get worse at altitude? 
pretty constant pan, but uh, your true airspeed increases as you get higher. Yes, the airs are a little less dense, but the engines are able to produce less thrust as well. Um, but yeah, as the true airspeed increases, uh, the, the sort of drag it increases as well. But obviously the profile of this, you compare it, say, to Concorde, you know, it's just it's going to be getting a lot more air molecules as it moves forward. So if I was to go idle thrust now, it would slow down very quickly profile of the, the uh, fuselage. That flies in How's the truck doing back there? Let's have a look. <laughs> it's still there, thankfully. Not tethered. All in one piece. Uh, Federico, I don't think you need to keep decision height on. I shall turn it off. Excellent. Uh, Lauren, isn't that the same with real radio? Different stations have wildly varying volumes? No, it's pretty consistent, Lauren. So you set your volume and... I mean, if someone's shouting down the microphone, of course they're going to come in louder. But um, you, you don't find yourself often having to change it. Um, I think that's limited by the fact that everyone has different equipment. Everyone speaks a little bit louder as well. Um, so you'll, you'll find that some users are very loud, others are not as loud as well. Usually when I change things, so I often have to fiddle with it. And what you're hearing in stream isn't exactly the same as what I'm hearing as well, so sometimes that makes it a little bit more challenging to manage the, the sound. Uh, we're at 33 Hotel, Boston 5000. This is 32 Hotel, we identify clients with level 350, direct to the bottom. Three five zero, can you get the waypoint one more time? Uh, which is three five hotel. Where's the three three hotel? Direct to the bottom. Uh, Thank you, the four minutes. Uh, pick the wrong one. Right. Anyway, uh, I keep going here to the FB, but unfortunately you can't actually bring up the charts. Let's have a direct to Van Uniform and Olympic to Alpha Delta. The charts. Uh, now hotel. ready for Luton. It's been a long time since we've gone into Luton. Uh, expecting a part of one Alpha. Typical London approach, getting you nice and early. Uh, very low, so quite difficult to sort of do a continuous descent. So that's the arrival approach. We want initial approach for 25 and final approach for 25. The ILS. There we go. So grab a airport chart. And I had a little look at the airport yesterday. We're requesting to park in a particular place to the size of this aircraft. And what we'll try and do is so either to either stand 62, 31, or 30 to give a bit more space to unload the lorry. And um, we'll see what happens. We might go for 62. Uh, Eklazos, what's the craziest thing you've ever heard over the radio? <laughs> I once heard an air traffic controller's phone ringing in the background. I can't remember. What, I cannot remember what the, the song was. Everyone's cracking up though on the radio. It's out of Barcelona. <laughs> Should have it on, obviously. Or someone next to the controller had it on, perhaps. I don't know if it was the controller. Uh, what else have I heard? Yeah, I've heard sometimes, I wouldn't say argue, but sometimes pilots and ATC can come to a misunderstanding. And I'm sure you've heard many of those cases online on YouTube where a lot of people listen to radio stations. Uh, I've heard a few things. Why do you need to come and your service to Federal Gulf Bay? We got a one for the kilometer descending mid level 100. Uh, Captain Matthias, uh, James Bones, I hope there's no chickens on that truck. Well, then hopefully they would have already been uh, killed because they wouldn't be breathing for that much longer. Uh, seeing the hold, I believe, in the... If I remember someone telling me rightly, in the Beluga, it's, uh, the hold's depressurised in flight. Okay, four, four, two, four, second, uh, hold on. Mark Sanderson, afternoon, Captain. Uh, have you flown real world yet or almost there? Apologies have been asked many times. You don't need to apologise any time, Mark. Uh, people ask the same thing all the time. Sometimes they come with you questions. Uh, and this year I've been flying three times on these ghost flights or, or uh, 
um, take off and landing flights to keep the aircraft current, make sure we stay current as well. And I have three scheduled passenger flights coming up in the next month as well. So I'm very excited uh, to, to, yeah, go back to work. It's going to seem unusual, but it's sort of repeating what happened last year really with the with the pandemic. Let's hope that's the end of it. We don't go back to the way things were. Uh, it's not going to be a normal summer for the aviation industry, for the tourism industry as well. Uh, but um, hopefully this time next year, I say this <laughs> as amusing as possible, but uh, maybe you won't be seeing me as much. Uh, I still always come back to streaming and I always envisage at least streaming once a week uh, when things get back to normal. Uh, with the, the way the roster usually works, when I started streaming it was around once a week, uh, once every week and a half anyway. And in between that making some uh, videos as well. Was it Nelly the Elephant? No. <laughs> and Lauren V, your PA to the frequency would have been a good one. What are you on about, Lauren? How do you know that? <laughs> Zelcho Gaming, he sounds very young for an airline pilot, though. I know. I know. Not much I can do about that, though, buddy. Thanks, Mark. Fantastic of you. Let's hope it gathers momentum. Let's hope so. Fingers and toes crossed. Uh, Andy, at what point in the approach do you usually tell the cabin crew to take their seats for landing? Um, usually, you know, once the, we get a message from the cabin to tell us the cabin's secure. Um, it depends on the weather. If it's really bad weather, well, they probably would have done it much earlier on a normal approach. Yeah, around 5 to 10 miles from landing. It can, it can vary. Uh, Hakan, during normal load conditions, how often uh, do you have flights or how many flight hours a week? In normal conditions, Hakan, if it's a normal summer schedule, we'll be flying close to 90 to 100 hours in the summer, in the maximum amounts. Uh, in the winter, uh, usually a little bit quieter. Again, it depends where you're based. Some uh, have a slightly busier operation. For example, if you're flying uh, from the UK to the Canary Islands, there's a lot of flights um, to the Canary Islands in the summer, because in the winter, because it's still to enjoy a little bit of sun um, but yeah some are usually 90 to 100 um, it's been a long time since I've done that many hours um, you know, I became a captain two years ago and when I became a captain I was very busy in my first base so I was trying to move 80 90 hours um, kind of transfer back uh, to, to a, little, a new, new base where I was previously closer to home um, and um, I mean last year post the first lockdown did I say 100 hours a week? 100 hours above. Sorry, Pangolin. 100 hours above, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, so, yeah, it, it's been a long time since I've done that. Last year, I had one month that was quite busy post, uh, post pandemic. I did 85 hours, but the rest, uh, from, Octo uh, from September, it got very quiet. So, I did August and September, October, by November, I flew twice, and then that was it. It all stopped, sort of, December onwards. Uh, Astro Hugh, how do you do a missed approach tree circle to land as the Navi charts do not specify what to do? Excellent question, Astro Hugh. Shall we have a look at the chart at Luton and see how we would actually go around if we were doing a circling approach there? Not that you'd ever do a circling approach, but uh, as an example. Um, so, circling, you can pretty much circle off any published approach, so there's no terrain issues. Um, oh, sorry guys, I'm just dropping like, uh, volume for my headset. Um, so here is the chart for Luton. Let's imagine we're circling. It doesn't specify a direction, so you can go left or right. Let's imagine today we're going on on runway 25 and breaking to the right uh, to do a circle to land uh, to land on 05. Now, if you're coming straight in, you got to the circling minimums and you had to go around, no problem whatsoever. Um, you could just climb straight ahead on the missed approach. Now, if I was downwind, uh, having broken right here, uh, so if I'm downwind and I lost visual reference to the runway. All you have to remember with a circling approach is if you lose visibility you have to go around and turn in the direction towards the landing runway, generally in the direction you're, you're circling. So in this case if I was downwind here and I lost visibility, I'd go around and make a left turn, okay, and it says here to go out to 1.5, what I'd just do is continue that turn to intercept sort of heading 
of 088 uh, and then continue to 3000 feet. Now, what would often happen in radar controlled airspace like this where it's very complex, a lot of um, um, traffic around, 80 will probably put you straight on the heading. They'll just say, okay, go around, fly on this heading. I've done circle to lands where ATC have actually specified yet, yeah, if you have an event for missed approach, turn on this heading wherever you are and climb to this altitude uh, and then to the hold here. What's the tricky one though is if you have to actually go around um, from here, imagine if we were unstable landing on the wrong runway. Now, again, this one's you know, missed approaches in this direction, so I'd actually go around here, climb to the circling minima, wings level, once we're about the circling minima, I'd just make a right turn to, to go to 3000 because that's where ATC wants you to go. Again, confirm with ATC. Uh, if you're not sure, but the general direction is, you know, if it was a, if it was a straight ahead missed approach, ignoring the fact that you have to make a left turn, and I went around here, I climbed straight ahead and make a left turn, and keep turning left till on the circling side until I'm on a sort of a 45 degree intercept for the, the missed approach. Um, things to remember: um, catch the aircraft load if you're doing it at 737. You have a maximum speed of 180 knots. Uh, you can't go above 180. So in the in the 737, we'd actually hold it at a flat 15. At flat 15, the aircraft will maintain 172 knots, um, which ensures that the aircraft won't accelerate to the flat 15 until you get to the missed approach attitude. So uh, that's it. That's it. Something we look at in the sim uh, every every now and again. Uh, Dino, are you on Unicom? Perhaps I'm meant to be on Unicom. Maybe I was handed over, but uh, I missed the call. But uh, I'm having a look here on the flat sim map. Uh, no, I'm still in his airspace. I'm just about to uh, leave Norwegian uh, airspace. Though. Very close to the boundary here. <laughs> Pat, I don't want to be on a plane with pilots done 90 hours a week. No, me neither. <laughs> Saying, listen, was telling Lauren that you'd feel claustrophobic in a 737. Uh, if you're over six foot tall, yeah, it's you can't stand up in the cockpit of the 737 without hitting your head on the overhead panel. It is a small cockpit. You guys, the members, will talk to Mike if you want to know how tiny it is. He, he operated the 737 for a short time and um, he, he was very uncomfortable. Lauren's put a very good point there, that's something a lot of people don't realise. So yeah, when you say we're flying um, 80 hours a month, you know, and you say you work 45 hours a week, yeah, Lauren's quite right there. That is 80 flight hours. So so that's actually, you know, when we're actually flying uh, from pushback to, to on block, it doesn't take into account turnaround report, which is often 45 minutes to an hour before their post duty time between turnarounds. Uh, and that's why you have flight hours, flight time, and we also have something called duty time. Um, and duty time could be up to 160 hours uh, a month. So office, um, say office jobs, don't do office jobs, but sim time, things like that are not taken into account with that. Uh, Gino, do you get any sort of saying where you get based, and what are you allowed to request a change in where you are based? Uh, yes, so... Um, at an airline which has several bases, um, you often, when I became a captain for example, um, well because I worked in the sim as an instructor I got a little bit more preference, um, a little bit of a priority over where I was based, so I was actually based in the UK as my first base, sometimes people get based out abroad, we have some bases abroad, um, and that uh, very much depends on several factors, you know, how big the base is, they, they have a sort of um, priority system so you, you request to swap to a base and you'll be at the bottom of the queue you know uh, with everyone else there um but yeah i i um i got based in the uk after command and i had to wait about uh, just under a year to get a transfer to my uh, home base in the uk i was quite lucky with that as well there have been some uh, retirement some people have left the uh, airline as well you know, people join and, and uh, leave airlines all the time um, so I got back uh, based a uh, little bit close to home. Uh, after year. Um, also, when I joined the airline as well, I was based in Spain. Um, and I was there for just under a year before I got based back in the UK. Um, and again, some bases are more popular. There's larger bases which have more aircraft. They see a lot of transfers as well. We also have people that uh, are not necessarily based at a certain airport. They fly from different based airports as well. Uh, each week they, they go there. 
not the life of me though. to uh, decimal eight. Thank you so much for the ATC, uh, and uh, I guess you're Norwegian. Yes, I am. Happy Constitution Day, sir. Thank you so much. Bye. Perfect. So over to Unicom. Uh, one two two decimal eight. That frequency is active, and hopefully, uh, when we get uh, a little closer to uh, the UK, we'll get some airspace, uh, get some ATC on London. And it's not often that you don't see any ATC, but actually now because. Things have opened up in the UK. We're all going out and about a bit more now. Um, you know, uh, so maybe, maybe we won't get in the ATC. Fingers crossed. Uh, Alcazos, do you still allow children to fly deck anymore? It once got to sit in the first stop seat whilst underway. This was 25 years ago, though. Uh, yes, 25 years ago, not a problem. But post 9/11, in the cruise, that flight deck door stays locked. No visitors. We can leave the fly deck to use the, the toilet, uh, but there are uh, security arrangements made in place for that. Uh, but no, unfortunately, uh, cockpit vis visits are a thing of the past, and um, on the ground, if someone was curious enough to ask, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind them just coming to have a look in. Uh, with COVID now, um, I want to be a little bit more careful, you know, if there's a young kid, oh, yeah, go have a look here, and stuff like that. But, um, so, Going to be um, these precautions now with with uh, social distancing. I mean, yes, we're all sat on an aircraft close to each other, uh, but in the flight deck, there's a requirement to um, you know sort of stay a bit more isolated with passengers at the moment through COVID-19. Um, not looking forward to what the requirement though. Uh, if we go flying every sector, we need to have two tests post duty uh, a few days afterwards. So each day we go flying. So I've ordered a load of these. PCR tests, uh, which are the self tests, which aren't, they basically tell you if you have COVID or not, but they're not 100% accurate. So if it does say you're positive, you have to have the other test, which I think is where you drive in somewhere. But uh, yeah, that's, yeah, hell, I, I don't mind doing that if it means I get to go flying and uh, keep my job. You know, so be it. And got here Torker uh, Bill Hilton hope you're doing well I've worked at uh, Broughton and seen the Belugas fly in the old and new ones yes the new XL which is based off the 330 I believe this is the classic version based off the 300 now, a little external view for those of you seen the excellent Beluga model again Jamlin thank you so much for taking the time to make these excellent deliveries for our Packer Airways Captain Shackle Oatbill says here in the North Carolina we have no restrictions as to the pandemic, no masks, no capacity in anything. I've seen in the US a lot of people seem to be getting on their lives normally, which is perhaps a good thing. The restrictions in Europe are a lot stricter at the moment. The UK have been very strict up to literally today, where we can now actually go out for a meal now um, and uh, go out as well. I hope to go to uh, see a friend in a play in a few weeks' time. Uh, Lauren, does your employer not cover such expenses when we're out of base? Yes, we do get a uh, per diem allowance and we can also claim mileage as well between the basis of any other employer. Uh, Pad Pilot, how many hours a month are you getting at the moment? Well, <laughs> on average this year I have flown in 2021 one hour and 30 minutes in my logbook over uh, five months. Uh, so you can do the maths there, it's on average what? <laughs> 20, 20 minutes a month. However, as I mentioned a few minutes ago in the stream, I have three flights coming up. And hopefully, as the summer comes to fruition, a few more flights and sectors. Uh, Trolls, surely you can't do PCR tests. Those are the really reliable lab tests. Sorry, Trolls, I'm getting modeled up then. If it's not the PCR test, it's the other one. So if, we, if the other one comes up as positive, we then have to have the PCR test. What's the one we're getting at the moment from the NHS? I've still yet to have to jam the thing up my ruddy nose, <laughs> so I can't remember. Is it lateral flow? 
one of these testing kits. I have a, uh, yeah, a rapid lateral flow test, I believe, is the one I have to do. Then a PCR test. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So lateral flow test I have to take when we start uh, when I start flying again uh, on the second and uh, fourth or fifth day. I can't remember. I need to review it. Uh, and then if you come back positive with a lateral flow test, you have to then book yourself in for the PCR test as well. Uh, Dave Hagen, the lateral flow test of the UK, you can order from the, the NHS directly for free and they, um, and they deliver it to your door. And everyone now can order a lateral flow test. I think they're encouraging as many people to order it as well. I've ordered two packs. Uh, Jose, have you got your vaccination yet? Nope. I'm a young whippersnapper. Should be coming soon though. Thanks again, Nightbot. Don't forget as well, everyone, you can win a copy of the Innie Bills Beluga, kindly do donated by one of my members, uh, Andy M71, to give away to someone watching uh, uh, in the stream today. So if you have uh, Explain 11, you're interested in uh, grabbing the Innie Bills Beluga, you have a chance of winning a copy. Uh, but it is a very reasonably priced, high quality add on at uh, 45 quid, excluding the 80. The 80 is around 50 quid or so, but very, very high quality aircraft. There we are, we're over the North Sea at the moment anyway. Cruising on nice and gently, sorry about the flickering clouds. There we are. So that was our departure point, Oslo Gardamone. Uh, we'll be carrying on uh, southwest. Uh, I think they're making landfall not too far away from Lower Stoff, Ipswich. And then we'll be routing um, south west towards Luton, which is just here. There's London Luton. Straight in, hopefully, on runway 25. Uh, Jaffa 365, the controller was brilliant today. Good on him. It was excellent. Uh, excellent ATC provided for such a huge area. It uh, certainly improves the immersion of the, the stream hugely. Uh, James Mullins, great add-on. Thanks for the excuse. I need to fly it again. Excellent. Excellent. So we'll do a fuel check at Gollum. And uh, seems to be okay at the moment. We have 13.2 tonnes. Message. No displayed nav 8. Well, that makes sense because we are over the uh, North Sea. Currently active waypoint was Gollum. So we'll scroll over to Gollum here. 1653. Probably just stick at 320 now. Uh, Jaffa, you are Ryanair 5 Echo November just behind you. Very cool. Let's have a look here on. I should think you're prob probably him. Not sure. Very, very cool. Yeah, it's got a few people joining on today. Astrid, you, I hope we get to see you fly the A310 just before release. Well, uh, to know that people had uh, any builds very um, um, quickly when I started streaming. They very kindly sent the Beluga early, so uh, maybe if I ask very nicely, they'll give me a copy of the A310 as well and want to give away to. Uh, does Sanderman, for someone with a new PC and FSX experience, would you recommend x -Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator? It really depends, to Sanderman, as of today, what you're trying to get out of your simming experience. If you're wanting to fly commercial jet airliners like this, I'd recommend x -Plane 11. Um, I think for GA Aircraft, Microsoft Flight Simulator is, is the one you want to perhaps choose because it just gives you the ability with little um, effort required to fly it wherever you want in the world and have a, a beautiful planet to, to fly with. It looks fantastic. Um, but I was reading a post this morning from one of the Just Polite forums, which was um, showcasing, I think it was their um, arrow, and, and someone was probing and testing, and they had to make quite a few changes to make sure the arrow um, sort of f flies, the edge of behavior is sort of more realistic ba based on some limitations that Microsoft Flight Simulator presumes. And it was sort of highlighting that a lot of people think that the Microsoft Flight Simulator, and don't get me wrong, I, I do enjoy the sim, but it, they think it is perfect. 
it still needs a lot of fine tuning work. I think, especially with the atmospheric modelling, with regards to how engines behave and, uh, and uh, performance of, of aircraft at higher altitude and things like that. Um, and they're updating it quite a lot at the moment, which is good. But I think that breaks a lot of the add-ons. I've heard that the the CRJ, the, the jet, the first payware jet, which we do have a copy of, quite enjoyed flying that aircraft. It's now a bit broken because of some updates and there's issues with it, but uh, no doubt that uh, again, both Microsoft and just like will keep on, um, or Aerosoft isn't it, that made the, the CRJ. They'll keep updating it, keep fixing it, which is great. Alright, do you know 7.4 Gear and Captain Joe? Do you see their videos? Would love a shared copy with them. Uh, <laughs> I have heard of both of them, and Mental Pilot and lots of other, uh, other pilot streamers and and content creators. Not that I spend much time watching them because we all have our own uh, USP, let's say. Uh, but um, no, uh, uh, you know, moving forward, always opens the ideas of, of doing content with other people as well. But um, sort of don't mind also doing my own thing as well. We all have a unique take there. But uh, yeah, we'll recommend all of them. They, all of us, give you an insight which this platform will be a Twitch or social media. It gives you an insight they wouldn't have had previously and they are very good for, for that as well. Uh, Jaffa325, welcome board as a member buddy. How'd you join the contents? As everyone else, you'll get invited to our members only Discord. Enjoy using your custom emojis in chat as well. And uh, welcome, thank you. Uh, Mark Sanderson, I've just updated the Zebo, having not flown it for a few weeks, and the FMC shows two routes now. What's this for? Zebo has or is implementing uh, Route 2. I haven't had a real play of it, but it basically allows you to program two routes into the FMS, and once two routes are programmed, you can switch between the two. Um, and it's something we use in our FMS um, when we're flying two sectors or, or more. So, what we can do is on the first sector, before, say, top of descent, we can actually load in the route for the the next sector after the turnaround. Um, so that means when you've landed, the routing's already there because the cruise is a lower work phase. Uh, the turnarounds can be a little bit quick, a lot going on there. So if you can save a bit of time, uh, lower the workload during the turnaround, uh, one of the ways is by inputting the routing into the FMS, which takes around two to three minutes. Um, uh, you, can, you can save yourself a bit of time. Uh, you can also plan your alternate routing using Route 2 as well, I believe, but that is something we don't, or uh, well, I don't uh, use that function for. There we are. What FPS are we getting here in the aircraft? 50. Amazing. Very FPS ready in the Eagles aircraft. Uh, that's a little bit louder. Great. So sat here on the cruise then. Look how much fuel we're burning an hour. Uh, fuel flow, 6 tons an hour. Look at that. So fuel used, probably up to 8 tonnes total. We've only been airborne for uh, 53 minutes. We almost used 8 tonnes of fuel. Jeebus. Oh yeah, oh sorry, your fuel flow here as well. 6.6 .6 tonnes an hour we're burning. Thirsty. Well, it's not so much the engine's being thirsty, it's trying to haul this thing through the sky. <laughs> Happy birthday, Matthew, if it is. Sus, but uh, if it is, happy birthday. No need for the caps, though. I read it completely normally. I wrote you to imagine if there was a game, what you're doing, a sim in which you do racing, flying back, trucking, driving to the airport. I think if one game did all that, it'd probably be a bit too much. Hi, Swifty. Hope you're doing well. And it's your first time with Four Stripes. That means uh, Swifty. It's a year as a member on the channel. Thank you so much, Swifty, for your continued support my entire time. And uh, I hope you're. Well, I guess you're still enjoying your time as a member. Thank you. Uh, children, how was the weather at Gardermo? It wasn't too bad. It was some light rain. Winds were calm. Um, cloud bases around what three or four thousand feet. Uh, Luton's looking a little bit more um, exciting. Potential for some thunderstorms. In fact, let's fetch the ATIS. Grab the weather for that now. Uh, so right now in the sim, oh, it's okay. Three, two, zero, and eight. Uh, so runway two five will be in use. Ten k scattered three thousand. There are some CBs, so 
active sky with the mode I have on, it will generate some thunderstorm activity based off that. Uh, 13 degrees QNH 1007. So, yeah, not bad, but potential for some thunderstorms later. Uh, Pad Pilot, is Zebo's EFB anything like the real thing? Um, so, my operator, we have an iPad, we use an iPad, uh, which is our electronic flight bag, a bag, and in which it has unique apps for different things. So, we have um, an, an onboard performance tool from Boeing for takeoff performance. We have a charts app from the from our charts provider, and we have a, a DocuNet app which contains all the documentation. So, I, I'm sure you've seen it. There's a very famous picture of when iPads first came out, where they had all the manuals for the 747, which you know stands what four feet tall, and he was comparing that to the iPad. Uh, and now the great thing about DocuNet is. Um, it has all the manuals in it, so the OF comms, the flight crew training manual, company specific manuals, uh, AFM, MELs, you know, the, the whole thing probably contains 80, 90 documents. And if you want to look up a particular topic or, or, or uh, area, you can just type the keyword in and it'll look at every single one of those documents for those keywords. So the ability to recall information, which is very important in aviation, there is such a huge amount of information that you need to be able to not necessarily know straight away but at least know where to find it makes it uh, an invaluable tool um, now there are some things you obviously need to know uh, but if you haven't covered a, a topic or an area for example a technical system on the aircraft for a short while um, you can get a little bit rusty so it's quite great to grab this iPad type in you know fuel pump uh, or whatever look it up and it'll look at not only the FCOP but also probably guidance to the MEL if you had to dispatch any uh, non normal checklists associated with that item it's very useful but is it uh, like the the real thing? Yeah, it, it, what Zebo ZFB does, it sort of incorporates that sort of AviTab element so you can bring up your Navigraph charts and also control the different systems on the aircraft as well. So, so it is nice and yeah, it's not too far off. Uh, Matthew Gabriel, can I see the engine switches, please? Certainly, but <laughs> a very specific request. Here's how you control the engine start, at least. So you've got the engine start mode, so you move it to one of the start mo mo modes, I guess, A or B, continuous ignition. Ignition's off at the moment as well. So uh, there's your engine start. Uh, to get that started, you need to have the APU on with APU bleed, which should be off. Uh, uh, there you are, so we can turn it off as well. I guess the Airbus is dealt with that for you, but in the 737, yes, you definitely want that to switch off with the engine bleed on. Uh, Clinton Carr, how long until top of descent? Just got here. Let's have a little look here on the ND. So have a little white arrow uh, just beyond 160 miles to make our first restriction. Remember, these top of descent points are based off an A300 or A310. Um, so we can probably delay that slightly, uh, and that is to be level at, uh, is it Neggle? I think at 220. A uh, little bit of an early descent here with the restrictions on the star, so we'll keep a close eye on that. Um, does that actually show you top of descent here in the FMS? We can work it out. Look, you can see, look, at 1719, we're still at 320, at 21, we need to be at 75, so that's going to be 20 past. Uh, so what's that? That is uh, 27 minutes till top of descent specific time. Uh, Matthew, sorry if I'm disturbing. Not at all. Obviously, I guess you're new here. You know, don't overload random questions like that, but this is what the chat's all about. You're free to ask any questions within reason, and I'm uh, here to interact with you. That's the whole idea. Uh, Steve must admit, Zebo 349.2 is fantastic. Yes, I think when 349.4 first came out, they had a few issues with the FMC freezing. Um, we streamed the release candidate of the 349, both for the member stream on Saturday and when we did Bristol Carcassonne on the Wednesday before, and that was working really nicely. Um, so, yeah, the latest public model looks like it's all good to go. Um, guys, I'll be streaming on Thursday or Friday. Um, Boundless Simulations, very, give, very kindly given me a copy of Knock Island West. Uh, so we're going to go to Knock in Island and also giving away a copy as well. So lots of giveaways this week. Very, very good of them. Um, so we're doing a little sector just to knock on Thursday or Friday. Uh, 
Uh, Pan gun and when or what do pilots do during the turnaround? Do you stay on the aircraft to get it back set up or is there reporting to be done at the airport? Um, so what we do Pan, um, you have obviously the, the captain and first officer but that's not how we utilise those roles in the flight deck. We have pilot flying and pilot monitoring. So if we're doing typically two sectors, uh, pilot flying would become pilot monitoring on the return sector and vice versa. So as soon as we've landed, let's imagine we're doing a turnaround in Luton going back to Oslo. Uh, I'm pilot flying at the moment. As soon as we've landed, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is complete the tech log, complete the shutdown checklist, then complete the tech log, make sure that it all signed off for that sector. Um, I'm then going to get the fuel sorted. The dispatcher will come on as well, tell us how many passengers we're expecting, tell them how much fuel we want so he can tell the fueler. Um, and then I'll jump out to do the walk around. Pilot monitoring will complete the external walk around every sector. And then pilot flying, in this case Jim, would have already started setting up there. Hopefully he's loaded up Route 2 in his FMC, so he could just load up Route 2. Uh, he'll get the ATIS, he'll um, complete just like I do every stream to set up, swap roles, uh, and go from there. Um, no need to report anywhere. Some airports have longer turnarounds, so we sometimes have turnarounds in excess of an hour. And if that situation's the case, we, you know, if it's way beyond that, I've once had a, a two-hour turnaround scheduled, and we actually just you know, shut the aircraft down, shut the door, and went and had a coffee in the terminal and an ice cream. <laughs> so, so yeah, some of those nice turnarounds, uh, longer time turnarounds, can be quite nice. Ah, uh, BLT950, was that you providing ATC? Good to hear you enjoyed my service. It was fun serving so many departures, especially in such a huge area of your regards, Centre. Thank you very much, BLT950. The ATC today was excellent. Well done. And uh, go enjoy the rest of your Constitution Day. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dialogue YouTube, do you eventually fly the 146 again? Yes, no doubt that'll come out soon. We now have the alpaca livery provided by one of my members, Jamlin, all ready to go. Um, but no, I'm always open to ideas. It'll be Zebo mod next, most likely. And um, I usually like to go Zebo mod, another aircraft, Zebo mod. So every 50% you know, of the, the flights I do are in a 737 uh, because that's what you guys primarily here to see. I'm a 737 pilot. I can give you the best guide to find that aircraft. But I like to alternate as you we are today. So 737, another aircraft, 737. Um, and on top of that, some streams on the second channel, like the one we're doing tomorrow. BLT, you've already enjoyed it with some friends and loads of great food. Thanks for flying, everyone. Awesome stuff, buddy. So, Matthew, as we were just mentioning, you don't need to go caps logs. We'll do as what we can to do a smooth landing here. As Steve says, how about a couple of tutorials on the newly added instrumentation uh, integrated a Ian approaches? Well, I don't. I need to look up that system, Steve, because I don't know much about Ian because we don't have Ian installed on in our fleet. I think that's to do with LPV approach. Well, I never approaches using LPV minima uh, and then using approach mode. Uh, and so it's sort of it's sort of like a GLS approach in, in, in its display uh, and function, but um, I'll have a think about that perhaps. At five and three sixty, do you get to choose the temperature in the cockpit? Well, I like constant eighteen degrees, or is that the same throughout the plane? And uh, now in the Beluga, let's have a look at the temperature controller. Um, so I'm guessing you're looking over here. So the cockpit temperature is twenty four degrees. Um, can you actually change the temperature with the of this aircraft the mod you can let's have a look here so we have a cockpit temperature gauge uh, in the aircraft I don't know how I think the the cargo hold in the beluga is depressurized whether it's heated or not I, I think it is but I don't know but let's try and let's go full cold see if it changes might take a while to update uh, let's keep an eye on it it might not be that function that turns the temperature down anyway but we'll keep an eye on it 24 degrees full cold the air conditioning pressurization is here in a digital format. You have it on gauges as well. Uh oh, I just went past Gollum, didn't I? And we're now approaching. Let's do a fuel check at uh, Taipan, which is coming up to 22 miles. Uh, Jamlin, got to go. Uh, Captain, catch you later. Thank you very much, Jamlin, again, for all the work you do behind the scenes uh, and spending your own time to improve the, the
the quality of, of, of the, the members and, and uh, the liveries is so kind of you and uh, take care buddy thank you uh, Dave haven't tried the A350 yet no nope, that's another one that needs to be flown and I understand that's getting better as well Uh, Luke Bailey, Runway 25, uh, Luton, thank you very much for the heads up, Luke. Well, that's what we were expecting. RS Turbo, do you, RS Turbo 50, do you prefer to use the term cockpit or flight deck? Uh, is there any difference? I guess I should say flight deck after this name of this channel. <laughs> no, I guess we call it flight deck, I think, generally. But there's no term, really. There's not one you choose over the other. They, they're both the same thing. Brian Cooper, good day, Captain, from sunny Long Island. Good, uh, it's going to be good afternoon to you. Should be, well, one, two o'clock there, shouldn't it? Good day to you, sir. And uh, once we pass the typing, guys, we'll start uh, planning our ascent. It'll be around 100 miles away. Let's have a look on the Lansom map here, see what the situation is. Make sure the truck's still attached. Excellent. Trucks are good. Actually, get a little bit of. Oh no, we're going to be rooting just outside of um, Holland's airspace. I'm to see in Holland. Luton is online. What have they got here at Luton? They have at Luton, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a ATIS and ground. I've got ground. That's okay. You can get vacated and taxi on stand. Maybe someone else will come in. We're just outside of Dutch airspace. Brian F5 Echo November behind us is uh, going the same cruise speed as us. <laughs> Obviously, wants to stay behind. He should be a decimal seven six or decimal seven eight, but his uh, ground speed's the same. Anyway, oh sorry, I just realised you're staring at a truck. <laughs> this is static and not moving. Hope you enjoyed that. They've got ten arrivals into Luton. Most of them from Gardamone. We've also got one from uh, Echo Papa Whisker Romeo and Hotel, Hotel Echo Sierra Hotel. I don't know where that is. Two departures as well. Excellent. Right. There is Typen. Let's do a quick fuel check. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of that control column. We all know what happened on the A300 stream few months back <laughs> I completely lost control of the aircraft I had to use my mouse to fly it um, there's the chance and that white wind was Taipan where are you there we are Taipan airborne airborne for one hour eight let's have a look at our flight time one hour eight so that's looking perfect time is exactly as expected um, remember we took an extra three tons, so we should have uh, 9, 10, 11.6 on board. We have 11 tons. Uh-oh, we've used about 600 kilos extra. And um, let's now check the fuel used. Should be 9 tons used. Uh, what's that? 8, 9, yeah, 9.5. So we burnt about an extra 4 or 500 kilos. Now in the, in the, in the 737, I've burnt 4 or 500 kilos extra in the space of an hour. It's probably something I'd look into investigating. But if you take into account the fuel burn of this aircraft, it's uh, six tons an hour. Six tons an hour. So yeah, in the whole grand scheme of things, you're talking an extra five minutes of fuel burnt. So yeah, we were we were exactly as expected. We burn a little bit extra here. Um, remember the reserves today. It's quite low, five tons. Sounds like a lot, but that's about 45 minutes endurance. That's to get to Stansted. So uh, we took an extra 30 minutes. Keep an eye out for any uh, nasty thunderstorms or more disruptive uh, weather later on. Hi, Patrick. Any plans on flying in from Echo Papa Kilo Tango? Greetings from Poland, I think that is. Echo Papa Kilo Tango has an awesome spotting platform for runway 09. Awesome experience when a plane flies just above your head. Um, yes, we're always looking for new destinations, uh, Patrick. I mean, we've We've got uh, something like 25,000 airports to visit in the history, in the uh, time life, lifetime of uh, flight deck to sim. <laughs> so probably one day we'll visit it. What about if I live to an old age and we're still doing this? If I can visit every airport in the world, <laughs> test of simulators. Anyway, let's start uh, setting up for our approach to uh, Luton. 
So here's all our charts. We'll hand over control to Jim. It's going to reference the um, any builds checklist. There really isn't that much to do in this. No, it's an old Airbus. There's also programming in a lot of things for you. So it's in preparation. Check the ECAM memo status page. There's nothing on the memo page. Recall. Everything's normal. No problems so far today. Uh, so weather and landing information obtained. Let's just get the updated weather in uh, Luton. So still the latest weather conditions. 3208. If you see bees around, they could develop into thunderstorms, especially this time of day. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. QNH we're expecting is 1007. Uh, landing elevation we've set. Uh, 500 feet to nearest 100 feet for that there. So on the FMS page it talks about just um, setting the performance straight away. So remember the performance uh, calculator here in the FMS. Um, you want to be using the ones off the bug card because this will be the difference between the A300 or A310 and what the Beluga says. So if we go to take off or approach, uh, at the moment we'll take full landing flat, flat 30 or 40. These speeds are referencing the 300 and the V approach of 136 based off our current weight. Um, our landing weight be select landing. There we go. Uh, 131. So it's a little bit slower, so we can fly. So this will obviously decrease slightly. So those are the speeds we'll be referencing. Uh, max landing weight, I think it's 140 tons. So although we're carrying a, a truck, you know, we're, we we could easily take a lot more mass in, in the cargo holds. So even though we took a little bit of extra fuel, uh, we're absolutely um, fine. Uh, well, well below our max landing weight today. Um, so let's have a look at the routing in the FMS just to make sure it's all looking as we'd expect it to be. So there's again uh, referencing you can put the, f the flight level restrictions in here but there's no mode in the Beluga that's going to respect that. It is your responsibility in the Beluga to use um, level change or vertical speed to ensure that you comply with the restrictions. Now it shouldn't be too difficult because you've got an ND and you've got your lovely altitude reference selector so you type in the altitude you want to be at and then you adjust your vertical speed to put the the altitude uh, restriction on the point at which you reach that altitude on the ND. Just a little green banana. Um, so it's not difficult. I was advised that level change is not used in descent in the Beluga um, because you get excessive rates of descent because the thrust will go to idle you got a huge drag profile, and to maintain its target speed, we'll probably need to descend at seven, eight, nine thousand feet per minute. So we're going to primarily use vertical speed throughout the entire descent here. Obviously, in op profile mode, just with the real Beluga, uh, isn't uh, isn't available. So coming into Barmy, first restriction uh, is going to be at flight level two six zero. So we can put it in there as a reference. The aircraft again isn't going to do anything to to maintain that, but at least we can put it in there. And then we go to the flight plan page, we can say, okay, 260 is in. Uh, Megal is a 220 restriction. That is actually programmed in. Look at 220. We're only going to be level for a short while, uh, going to Ditop and then to Lapra. Lapra also has a restriction to be below 250 knots at flight level 120. That is also coded into the flight management computer. Then we'll make a slight right turn, tracking 255 for 23 miles, routing towards Abbott. Abbott does have a restriction to be below 140 at or above 80. So again, we're looking here at Abbott. It has that restriction in. Now, expecting a straight in, London coming in towards Luton, you have a lot of airports in a, in a small area. So you've got London stands and London Luton. Um, flying around London, uh, you're very, very important to comply with your speed and altitude restrictions. Um, flying CDAs into these airports can be challenging for certain runways in use because they have strict restrictions. Um, but we'll try, if there's no ATC, to follow the procedural arrival from Abbott onto the ILS. If not, we'll get vectors. So from Abbott, we've got a little transition here. What else was mentioned on the start? I don't think there was anything too pertinent about the routing which we've discussed, descent planning and restrictions. Don't go beyond Abbott without clearance. If you get to Abbott, you haven't heard anything from ATC, make a right turn into the hold. Um, so yeah, typical busy uh, arrival. So via Abbott then, um, we've got a range of 12 miles to Barkway. So I don't know if you're still here, John, and whoever it was talking about conditional waypoints. Here is one in the 737. You couldn't adjust or modify this waypoint. You can delete it. Um, but you, you can't actually change it or you can't edit it. Um, so from 12 miles you need to be at 6,000 feet, that checks. We then have the Foxtrot point to also be at 6,000 feet. That's going to be at 6 miles away uh, from from uh, Barkway. Then routing direct to the VOR. Uh, it talks about being at 210 knots at 
factor by 3000, so that's fine in the FMS. And then, yeah, that should take us all the way to the extended centre line uh, for runway 25. So let's just go here to plan. There we are, Foxtrot Barquay, Barquay 3 on the extended centre line for runway 25. So that's it, that's just the transition. Um, talks about the MSA, but we can actually go onto the ILS chart for all that information. So let's now tune all the nav aids we need. So we go down here. So ILS frequency for 25 is 109.15. This radio tuning panel has the function to save these frequencies if you so wish. Um, you can see it's there from my test sector yesterday. Uh, courses are 255 are set. We've got the squawk in. And uh, we've got ATC squawk 5604 transponder is all as it needs to be. So that's it. Courses, frequencies, 1800 feet for the beacon. So the beacon is 345, which is Luton. Uh, so 345. And that's it. Barquay, it'll probably tune automatically because it's very clever. And then all we have to do is on approaches move the uh, switch here to ILS and it'll automatically tune the ILS frequency so you can then use that to navigate. Um, oh, or to intercept the localizer and navigate. Uh, terrain, no real issues. If there's any problems around Luton, we'll maintain 3,000 feet or above and we'll be clear of all obstacles. Um, so onto the ILS we'll go. Platform altitude is 3,000 feet. So that's coded as Foxtrot, Foxtrot 25. And then down we'll go 3 degree ILS. We're looking for Pappies on the left and high intensity approach lights. Uh, if we have to go around, it'll climb to 3,000 feet. We'll go straight ahead to 1.5 DME or 1500 feet, whichever is later, probably the 1.5, and then we'll make a left 50, turn, track 088, find the 3000 feet, and then as 20, directed by ATC. 10. Pete, thank you so much for the fiver. Got to go and prepare dinner, thanks again, Captain. Cheers, Pete, enjoy your dinner, thank you very much for tuning in as well. Yeah, I streamed a little bit earlier today, so probably the approach time isn't perfect for most of the people in the UK, could have probably delayed it by a couple of hours, but uh, so be it. Thank you so much, Pete, for popping in, and for your continued support as a member, and your donations are very kind. Thank you so much, Pete, enjoy your dinner, buddy. Um, right, so that's the routing covered. And the missed approach. The actions for go around here. We did a low approach and go around in this aircraft when we went to um, NASA Space Center, uh, Kennedy Space Center in the Beluga. That was a wicked stream. Um, so I think it's something like go around, I'll push Toga, advance the thrust levers manually, because they're very slow to spool up. I'll probably disconnect the other throttle. Um, yeah. I'll go initially to flaps 20, 30, raise the gear, continue flap retraction, making sure we level off at 3000. We'll see what happens. Touch wood will be fine. Um, so, runway, runway 25 Luton. Uh, not the longest runway here, okay? 2,162 meters. Um, we're going to use the full length here. Even with all the brake medium I used here uh, yesterday, I only just made hotel. So, um, we're not super heavy in the Beluga. Remember, the approach speed's quite slow as well. So, um, you know, hotel is easily achievable. You could probably make Charlie if you cook the brakes, but I really don't want that truck. Yeah, I want to be braking hard, and all of a sudden I see <laughs> see the rear of an articulated lorry go right over our heads, go roof. <laughs> so, so we go want to brake medium, and uh, we'll vacate at hotel. And there isn't a landing performance calculator, but that should be fine. And the plan is once we vacated at hotel, we should have ground online. We're going to go hotel alpha. I'm going to request parking on stand six two, um, and that way I can unload the truck ready for tomorrow's stream in Euro Truck Simulator. Uh, magically appear in our headquarters in London <laughs> as were the limitations in the sim. So based off that then uh, we're going to want to break uh, medium and uh, we use reverse thrust to vacate hotel and uh, hopefully that thing will be unloaded safely on the way, repaired ready for tomorrow and I'll change the badge from a Mercedes to a Scania <laughs> as is the magic of, of desktop simulators. Oh no I've accidentally programmed or gotten rid of my default view. There we are. So that's it, briefing complete. I think I've covered everything. No, the minimums I didn't set. Uh, so, minimums for this approach. Uh, refer to the point at the bottom here. So, Cat 1 ILS category. Yeah, maybe Cat C still. Let's go for Cat C. Well, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. Look, 708. So, I think that's on the takeoff approach page. Uh, 708. And do I. I think this will override the fact that you set your decision height. Decision height we only use for 
for cat 2, cat 3 and operator, but I'll set this to 200. The thing is though, this is based off a radio altimeter and especially Luton, the terrain's quite undulating on the approach, so you, you're going to get an inaccurate minimum score, but I'll set 200 anyway, so we get at least something there. Um, right, we've got the weather, we've loaded the FMS, we've talked about the landing performance, the runway, the star, the weather, the go around procedure, we've discussed everything. We're all ready for top of descent, uh, which will be coming up uh, in around 40 miles. Very good. This to me, the MDA setting is only for non-precision approaches. You have no way to insert a DA in this plane. Well, you can hit, don't you? Decision height. Or, or, oh, sorry, but that's a height above the ground. I've got you. Yeah, same same at my operator this time. We only use MDA for non-precision approaches. I hope that's something I taught you. <laughs> but thanks for reminding me. And, um, yeah, I guess, I guess you only use MDA to set DA in that case. Uh, which is the same on the um, 320 series. When I first flew the Airbus, it caused a lot of confusion for me. I was like, how do I set the DA? I was like, no, you use MDA for everything. But um, there is a definition difference between DA and MDA. An MDA is a minimum descent altitude, which is the lowest point at which you can fly on the approach and less visual, which is why we add 40 feet to the minimums on the 737, whereas a DA is a decision. You can actually go slightly below that uh, as long as you execute the missed approach at that decision altitude. Uh, Crownman 99 UK, Luton's closest airport to me, about 15 miles away. It has runway 0826. I should think the magnetic variation has changed. So now it's 07 and 25, Crowman. It used to be 0826, but uh, over time, uh, the, the magnetic, the point at which magnetic north is, moves over the planet, so they have to change the runway direction. God knows what they'll do in, what was it, how many thousand years? Because they reckon the, well, they, I say they reckon they know that the magnetic poles swap, don't they? They flip over. So north will become south, south will become north. If we're still around at that time point, they're going to have to do a lot of painting on the runways. <laughs> it's going to be very confusing. Uh, Mark King ever thought about flying the A350? That's someone else has suggested that today as well. Uh, possibly. <laughs> possibly. Yes, no doubt. Uh, Listman, you can only use the MDA setting for RNF approaches in profile mode, so the beluga this mode is practically useless. Ah, okay. Well, we should we know the the important thing is to know is this: as long as you've got the correct QNH set, is when the altimeter says 708 feet on here, 708 feet. Uh, then you know your, your minimums, because all you're doing is you're referencing a, an alert for the aircraft to tell you minimums you know, at this point here. So that's why we're setting it. Oh, Pan, it'll be more interesting in between since reversals aren't instantaneous. Oh, there you go. I don't know. Um, how, how quick is it, that shift from, from uh, when, the, when the poles will flip? <laughs> Chaffer 335, better start up a paint company then. Brilliant. Uh, Gino, any advice for someone looking to become a pilot on the VATSIM network? Well, Gino, thank you. Uh, for such a well, same, same, thank you for such a question, but uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of great guidance there available on Vatsim. Um, the thing is, keep an eye out on the Vatsim events. Uh, on the Vatsim events page, they do sort of new wings events. People who are, who are just recently joined, um, but you know, reference um, streams like mine, streams from other uh, guys as well. There's a guy called Aviation Pro who is a, a pilot in training. But he was a big simmer when he grew up and he actually has some very good VATSIM flight tutorials. I actually reference them because VATSIM is brilliant and excellent at replicating ATC but the way they sort of construct uh, tower ground uh, center when there's not many people online. When I first started VATSIM I was like what the world's all this? Um, but no there's some great guidance available online to, to follow you. But uh, no enjoy and hopefully we'll see you on uh, an Alpaca Airways uh, aircraft soon. So, remember, jumping back here, let's have a look here. We have our top of descent arrow, but remember, that is not based off a beluga. Uh, that is based off the A300. Um, so, to make that restriction bar me at 260, I can start descending at this arrow, but it'll be a lot more of a shallower descent required. Uh, uh, or not necessarily shallower one, but the thrust won't, won't go to idle. Um, 
but uh, we can still reference that uh, as a point of, of calculating when we should start our descent. Oh wow, corner page, 1,000 to 10,000 years to change. Okay, so it's not a, I'm not going to wake up next day <laughs> and start heading off towards, uh, from the UK to Spain in a northerly direction. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, Tim, the chart regarding extended center line, am I re reading it correct? The center line looks to the right of the approach. Am I think right in thinking that you would make a left turn after the VOR? Let's have a look here, Tim. Uh, yes, the initial approach, the extended sense line only goes up to a certain point, but if you look here, yeah, the extended sense line, I mean, at this point here, we're probably out at 20 miles, but yeah, on the arrival, we're going towards Abbott, and then we're making a left turn, and at 3.3 miles from Barkway, we are intercepting the extended sense line uh, from Luton, but it isn't straight in all the way from uh, Abbott, it goes towards Barkway. So, so this arrival is utilising the VOR to navigate procedurally uh, if you wanted to do so <laughs> Greg Scott behave yourself <laughs> Swifty got to go now can't enjoy the rest of your flight thank you very much buddy I right, Gatwick Aviation I'm willing for I'm waiting for a solar flare to make out the GPS uh, to take out the GPS satellite so I could dust off my INS skills you know what there was an interesting discussion I had with an FO last year about these uh, solar flare events now they don't happen that often, but when one of these solar flare events go off, or one of these, was it a coronal mass ejection? Uh, probably completely mispronounced the term or what exactly it is, but essentially it has the potential to knock out uh, power grids, affect electronics, and apparently if one is strong enough, it will completely, you know, short circuit everything. I don't want to be flying around when one of these things go off. I'm, I'm putting it there. And they reckon, what, 130, 40 years ago when kind of electricity was in its infancy, one of these went off in was it the US or Canada and it knocked out early power grids or, or early power stations. Um, so yeah, it, it was. we were talking about it for ages, I remember, uh, with, with this guy here. It's, um, it, will, it will happen one day, uh, but what, we only, we're now so reliant as a, well, as a species, I should say. Electricity. Uh, it'll be it'll be absolute chaos when that does eventually happen. Anyway, there uh, we are. We just passed our top of descent arrow. So what we'll do, we'll start our descent now to be level at uh, Barmy flight level uh, two six zero. So get your tods in chat and uh, let's go down two six zero. We're not going to use level change. Oh, remember it's an Airbus vertical speed. Let's set around two thousand five hundred feet per minute and see where that puts us. It can utilise the ND. Well, no, it's actually a yellow banana, the correct colour compared to the 737. Well, would you look at that? Two and a half thousand feet. That's going to work out pretty much nicely. In fact, we'll just keep it. We'll increase it by a couple of hundreds. You got a little vertical deviation indicator, but remember that deviation is based off a different aircraft. Turn the noise up here slightly in the old beluga. Well, maybe it wasn't that close. Let's do 3,000 feet per minute. There we are. And then we'll go to Megal. 220. Top of the drops. Love it. No problem, Tim. Got it sorted. Uh, Gawick, the uh, theoreticals are equally interesting and worrying. Oof. It is. Um, there's a fantastic... Hello, Jack. There's a fantastic YouTube channel I've started watching, guys. Really, really interesting. I'll sh I'll get the link for it now. It's got around 15 million um, subscribers. I can't remember the name of it now. You guys most definitely heard of it. But there's some really interesting videos. If you guys are like me and quite interested in things like black holes, I'm not clever enough to understand the science, but I very much like reading sort of simplified <laughs> versions of these things. And, and it's a fantastic YouTube channel. Um, you guys will know what it is before I post the link here. Subscribe to it, but I can't find it now. It's called Kurz Kurz Gaked in a Nutshell. It is such a cool channel. Uh, I've been watching loads of their videos. Hey, buddy, hello. Yeah, check this YouTube channel out, guys. Really, really would recommend it. Thanks, Alex. Kurzegaard. Kurs You've got it, guys. Yes, Alex makes it. Brilliant videos. Anyway, there's the 260 restriction. I was too busy trying to find that YouTube channel. Uh, so, 
I just forgot to, one of the things we do at my operator is just slightly arrest that rate of descent so you don't approach your cleared altitude at doing 3,000 feet per minute, and we just avoid any nuisance TCAS TAs. You know, perhaps there was an aircraft at 250 below it, so if you're coming down at 3,000 feet per minute, it could potentially, potentially generate a conflict. Yeah, Paul Emerson, stuff like that blows my mind trying to comprehend it all. Uh, absolutely, Paul. And what I, what you'll like about that um, um, YouTube uh, channel is it, it simplifies things, so it puts you in, it puts it into a sort of uh, perspective where, where you know, you can understand it and go, wow. And, that or something, but uh, yeah, I've, I've, I subscribed to it about four or five days ago, and I got stuck watching his videos, videos on black holes, uh, videos on the deepest part of the oceans. Really, really interesting. Uh, Kurzgeigt is a German word for shortly spoken. Ironically, there you are. Right. Anyway, next restriction. Uh, having made that one, is to be level at 220 by Megal. Started going down nice and gently. So it's just about keeping an eye on the charts here. You know, can't be quite as efficient with the descents in this. You know, VNAV obviously will calculate an idle path descent to keep the thrust at idle. Thrust on descents like this aren't quite as economical. But um, when you're flying an aircraft like this, you don't need to worry about that. Fuel's okay as well. How much fuel have we got here? We've still got this page open. We should clear that. Uh, 8.6. Why am I? Have I? That sounds like a burnt loads of extra, really? 8.6? That, that's not much, guys, in this aircraft. That sounds about right, actually, because we took an extra 30 minutes. Uh, next waypoint's Megal. Let's just have a quick check at Megal. Remember, I changed the fuel bias to 30%. It's been reasonably accurate, but we did find we were burning a little bit of extra fuel by the time we got there. Where are you, Megal? Megal, there we are. Uh, we should have 6. Uh, three tons of Megal, which well, let's say we're there now. We took an extra three tons, so we should have seven, eight, we should have nine point three. Yeah, we're, we're down about seven hundred kilos of fuel. Uh, fuel burn should be around eleven three, and we've used twelve. So yeah, we burn about six seven hundred kilos. Egg. Amazing. on the door, Essex approach. Flash. Speed 220 knots on their cell, Piker 1 Alpha 6. Position across path of descent, flight level 80. Amazing, thanks, ATC. Piker 1 Alpha 6, Piker 1 Alpha 6, Essex radar, run ahead, find Echo November descending uh, 20, flight level 20. Flight level 20. Essex radar, hello, hello. vector, for the <laughs> island approach runway 22 at Report aircraft type. So we'll, uh, yeah, uh, Essex. And, uh, it's funny, Essex like that in real life. They often want to, uh, Rhino fly back in the very like very like very 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 Maintaining flight level 220 on the uh, Barmy 1 Alpha, inbound to Lapra, and we're uh, in Los Malumi. Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, Essex Radar, hello, vectors for the island approach runway 25 at Luton. Descent flight level 120, level Lapra. Descent flight level 120, level Lapra, vectors for ILS 25 Luton, Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo. <laughs> Lumpy at work. Right, <laughs> vertical speed. And we've got that restriction as well. Two alpha so 120 is set. Again, miles. Descent to uh, I'm going to revert now. Just going to 270 We're just going to put the uh, yellow banana just before Lapra. And Lara is about to fly the beating bomber. Don't think there's one on right the X-Plane or am I just like simulating? Turn right heading 270 degrees, Alpaca 1 Alpha Victor. Alpaca 1 Alpha Victor, descent, flight right, level 80. Right, so the music off now. Descent 80, Alpaca 1 Alpha Victor. 
Let's go to 3,000. Beautiful. Should be approaching uh, landfall very soon. Right, now five back in November, speed 25. That's right, Ipswich will lowest off and make uh, landfall. East coast there. Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, speed 250 knots or less. Uh, 250 knots or less, Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo. So let's go 250. And even with this big old beast, look, it's struggling to slow down at uh, 3,000 feet per minute. So what I'm going to do is just arrest that rate of descent slightly. I'm just using a little bit of speed brake. Just to help us slow down. Uh, Nicholas, does this aircraft show TCAS on the ND? I can't remember. Did it have any TCAS traffic on there on the display on the part show? I really, I genuinely can't remember. Oh, so speeds back to two fifty-ish. Just another ten knots to go. Oh yeah, there is the blighty, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, look, the weather's just reloaded. There's radar, Alpaca one Juliet Mike. Uh, Flight level 180 in band Alpaca 1, Juliet, Mike. Uh, Essex Radar, hello, vector for the ILS approach, runway 25, Adlington. Report aircraft type. Uh, aircraft type is uh, Beluga uh, ST. Excellent. Beluga is uh, good. Alpaca 1, Juliet, Mike. Descend, flight level 130, level Lapra. Descend. 130 level Labra, uh, Alpaca 1 Juliet, thank you. There we are, so. With our 7 feet to go, our range descent is good for us. 4 0 track, correction, 5 0 track miles, descent to altitude 5,000 feet, QNH 1008. Uh, Jaffa managed to overtake in the cruise, we were doing the 747. Uh, Captain Franz, hi Captain, how does an air crew behave in case of total radio failure? Great question, very unlikely, as we do have two radios. Um, rules depend on which country you're in, but there are some sort of standard um, ICAO rules. Essentially, you know, continue flying as you were, um, your continued clearance level speed for seven minutes, and then after that you continue on your flying plan, Squawk 7600, and if you look at certain charts, they'll have information for kind of loss of comms guidance usually, uh, but countries have different rules. Uh, Variation, something we look at very briefly during the command upgrade. Um, but yeah, the, the chances of happening very, very unlikely. Uh, Groman, in real life, if you drop below the minimum altitude on approach, does the airline get fined? Uh, that's actually a really good question. Something touch wood, I haven't yet done. I've busted an altitude, but it does happen uh, for a whole host of reasons. Um, but no, you, you get a phone call about it, we'd have to file a report about it. Um, I don't think a fine would come in, um, if, if, even if safety was compromised, there would be a learning environment, but the thing is, it needs to be investigated regardless to see what happened, it's usually a chain of events which, which happened to cause these incidents, uh, could be something that happened to the, the pilots, could be something that ATC did, you know, a last minute change, if they suddenly said, ah, stop descent at uh, 13,000 feet, well, it's too late now, um, but it's all to do with safety. Airlines get fined things like noise and Right, made the restriction to be 120 at Max 250, as assigned by ATC, speedbreak is stowed. <laughs> Gordon, isn't the answer to wave to the Typhoon pilot? Uh, you're yes, well that's one thing airlines do get fined for, I think, is... Uh, what we call clock events, so prolonged loss of communication, so if, yeah, if they're having to dispatch the country's the air defence <laughs> air force, and you, you have to wave off a, uh, a Eurofighter or a Raphael in France or a, whatever they have in each respective country, no doubt they've got a bill of some sort. So they're very hot now on making sure you're not Almost there, yeah, we're on the, we'll be on the approach very soon. Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, turn right, heading 260 degrees. Uh, right, heading 260 degrees, Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo. So on vectors now. Right, 5 Echo, November, turn left, heading 240 degrees. Left, heading 240 degrees, right, 5 Echo, November. Alpaca 2 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 Alpa
Oh no, he's down already. It looks like we've been lucky. Uh, weather being generated by active sky it was low yesterday, even with just CBs. Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, speed 220 knots or greater. Uh, 220 or greater, Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo. Stay at 250 for now then. Uh, Motraz, how is it that your community is so experienced? I haven't seen any bad Alpaca pilots ever, in my opinion. It's amazing. <laughs> high skill levels on your live streams. Well, thank you, Bodraz. I mean, everyone that uses Alpaca, uh, you know, have been watching the streams there, and I like to think I set a reasonably high standard. Um, certainly the members uh, are really keen to, to um, learn things, do things as realistically as possible. So uh, our group flights that we do with 50, 60 aircraft, of course we have levels of experience. Uh, we all make mistakes, including me. Um, and the thing is, even if you make mistakes, is don't worry about it. ATC should also accommodate that mistake too. Uh, but no, Certainly, as a member, I like to provide a kind of fun degrees. learning experience for everyone. Please, Please well, thank you so very much, Rodras. That's uh, very, very kind. Cool, so there we are. There is True Earth by Orbex below, looking beautiful. If you have just joined in here, we're with Essex Radar for our vectors into Luton. Uh, I'll be touching down in approximately 10 to uh, 15 minutes. And uh, don't forget as well, Andy M71, one of my members, is very giving me very kindly give me a copy of the uh, Beluga to give away to, to someone watching today. So make sure you stay tuned. We're doing that uh, whilst we're uploading a uh, truck <laughs> from from the Carnivorous Hold. Uh, Ryan heading 270 degrees at like a five primary code. That's speed. Like a five back in November, descent slightly below zero. I think that's probably something to do with the 737. Oh, Baffy doesn't want the stream to end. Well, we'll be live tomorrow at 8pm over on Flight Next Sim Gaming. Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, descent flight level 900. Descent flight level 900, Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo. So 900 is checked. Miles, uh, we've got 50. Remember, I'm on vectors. I'm on vectors, vectors here, so they have restrictions to maintain. Uh, unless they say, you know, please be level a B, um, you know, you're sort of free to do your own thing. Obviously, it's nowhere near as busy as it would be potentially in London. No, I'm heading 190 degrees to the Sunday. Right, a 5 Echo November. Uh, was it the heading 270? Can only see 250 sets. Samuel, that's the speed. I went for the speed first. There's our heading 270. Alright, approaching flight level 100. Let's do our post cruise check. So, fuel. We have 7.8 tons of fuel. We have 5 tons needed for standstead. It's around 20 minutes of extra fuel. We burnt that little bit extra we took here. Put the turn off. On the control, good evening, transverse to Golf, passing uh, for level 150. Pressurization's fine, Golf, Essex, radar, hello, vector for the ILS approach, runway 25, at Luton. Report yeah, aircraft type. Cool. Uh, it's normal, that's it, checks and please. 1738. No, checks complete. Right at 5 back in November, turn right heading 320 degrees, descent to altitude 4000. Uh, 320 degrees, you could you repeat the answer to the employee? Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the November, descent altitude 4,000 feet. Right, a 5 back in the Flight level nine, uh, nine zero. I'll pack a one two bit mic. Uh, Samuel, don't down. worry. You did see me change. I changed the one one incorrectly, so that's probably why you, you said it. But uh, I went for that's just speed. Uh, heading. Afternoon. I'll pack a one three seven. Have you sent it for a one two zero on the? I just see one. Sounds like clear, young clear, freckles clear. on frequency. I'll pack a one two three seven. That's six radar. Hello. I've got no flight path for you. Where you? Uh, so if you refile, it'll be easier to ask you where you're landing. Uh, yeah, I'll get that refile for you. One second. 
Bravo Echo, descent flight level 80. Descent flight level 80, Alpaca 5, Bravo Echo. There's 8,000, so it's just around 1,000 feet. Descent Alpaca, descent altitude 3,000 feet, right heading 220 degrees. Cleared ILS approach, runway 25. Where's this? I've got Papa turn right now, heading 220 degrees. Descent house to 3,000 feet. Cleared ILS approach, runway 25. What a beast. Right heading 220 and descent 3,000 feet. Cleared the ILS, runway 25. Uh, back at 1,200 feet, that's not Should be through there. Uh, quarter page, what is the transition altitude for QNH? Uh, I think it's 6,000 feet. Uh, but in the um, in Europe, it's a lot lower than I guess maybe more from the US. It's about to get to 1,000. Heading 270 degrees, speed 220 knots or greater. Taking Lapra to 70 degrees and 220 knots or greater. Alpaca, let's just head to Gulf. Alpaca, one, Julie, Mike, turn left 5 degrees. At left 5 degrees, Alpaca 1, Juliet Mike. Interesting, we aren't. Alpaca 1, Alpaca 2, Juliet Mike. 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 Alpaca 2, Juliet Mike.
So hopefully it'll turn towards base leg any second now. So very checklist. Uh, don't know how to get the eye dents up on here, but I'm happy that's the correct frequency tunes in DME's decreasing on sort of cavalier attitude I take every day. Um, Contact us, my brother, turn left heading 180 degrees, speed 180 knots or greater. Uh, left heading 180 degrees, 180 knots or greater. I'll back a flight right very good. Okay, so we'll skip Contact on 1 Alpha Victor, when established, speed 160 nice knots fast. or greater. Nice and fast, so there's 180 degrees. Uh, when established, speed 160 knots or greater. Frequency tunes here, so frequency tunes are 1915, Checks there. The uh, Alpaca 137 leaves Abbott heading to zero degrees. Uh, leave Abbott also, great by CTA today. Look at that. So, my curiosity's beating me here. I don't actually know where that is. Alpaca 1 Juliet Mike. 40 track miles to send to Alpha. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Down there. QNH 1008. Send to 5000 QNH 1008 one zero zero eight. Alpaca 1 Alpha Victor, just established from the local Alpaca 1 Alpha Victor, Alpaca 1 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 
Ah, that's better. There we are. Alpaca 1 Alpha Victor, vacate right when able, contact ground 121.75. Uh, BK when able and contact ground 121.75, I'll pick a one That's up. five miles, start configuring, gear down, take another natural flops, and we'll select we'll four, three, bug, eight, 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 our uh, three, final one, approach three, speed. Nine knots, runway two, five, cliff uh, so that is we approach 129, so bug 130. On speed brake, and landing checklist. Sea brakes armed, gear is down with three greens, down with three greens, select the landing flap now, just select it, ground spoilers are armed, uh, nose lights at the takeoff position, it is, then check the flaps, we have flaps 40-30, or 30-40, and there we are, checks complete, uh, so the engine stabilising to maintain 130 knots on final approach speed, get your landing guesses in, what do you reckon today, in the old beluga with a little 9 knot crosswind, hopefully no problems. Well, there she is. Be there, 4 3 Romeo uniform. I'll pack a 5 for our Moeco, clear to 3 1 0 degrees, 9 knots, from my 2 5 clear to land. My 2 5 clear to land, I'll pack a 5 Bravo Echo. Right, clear to land, check is complete. So, first thing I'm going to do is just disconnect the order from just so I can get my thrust stabilised where I want it. I don't actually know how to cancel the blinking, a blinking thrust. Uh, lever. I always disconnect the autopilot using this. There we are, autopilot is disconnected. Always making airbus sounds. Right, we'll try maintaining around 130 knots till touchdown. So minimums, uh, it's around 700 feet. Uh, scenery by TDG guys, really nice scenery by him. Uh, got the orange easy jet hangar in Luton, you can already see. Let's reduce a little bit of thrust there. Digital Dave talking towards us. Yeah, pound it down, the truck could take it, yes. <laughs> Gotta get that truck safely to our headquarters. Looking good. So there's minimums. Out there. A little bit left of sense line, but that's not a bad thing. We're crossing from the right. Keep it descending. Check. Close. Five. A little bit of left rudder coming in. Oh, lovely. We're right on the edge of a butter, I think, there. And a good landing, but we've got the butter. Right, speed brakes up. Reverses. And coming in now. Manual braking. Going all the way to the end. It's a little bit too firm to brake for that point there. I want to use all the runway. There's 60 knots. Side reverse. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Luton. A little bit of a float there. Really wanted to carry on going down the runway, but uh, got it all nicely settled down. Beautiful. Right, stowing the reverses. Luton Tower, Alpaca 1 Juliet knots. Mike, established ILS runway 25. Alpaca 1 Juliet Mike, Luton Tower, continue runway 25. Right, speed brakes. Continuing runway 25. Alpaca 1 Juliet Mike. Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, contact ground 121.75, goodbye. Uh, ground 121.75, thanks a lot for the ATC, Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, okay, bye. Excellent, right, let's go over to ground, and uh, just whilst we're vacated there, we'll turn all the bright, brighter things off, so retracts and uh, strobes to off, and just turn the weather radar off as well. And uh, we're going to request stand 62. And uh, Luton Ground, hello, it's Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo. Vacated uh, 25, request stand 60. Did I change over? I did. So we're here at Bravo. Alpaca 5 Bravo Echo, um, are you able to stand 3 here on the cargo apron or not? Uh, where's that? <laughs> stand by. I don't even know where that, uh, where that is. Yes. Yeah, it's down 3 zero is fine. I'll pack a 5 Bravo Echo. Thank you. You see, have a great day. <laughs> uh, I'll pack a 5 Bravo Echo. Thank you. You can taxi Bravo Echo Delta for some 3 zero. Uh, Bravo Echo Delta for stand uh, 3 zero. I'll pack a 5 Bravo Echo. So Bravo uh, Echo Delta going all the way in on the uh, through the cul-de-sac, they call it here in Luton. <laughs> Excellent. 
Excellent, excellent, excellent. Right, uh, I'll mute the alert to see a few things coming in here. Thanks, guys, very kind. Don't forget, we're going to give away a copy of this as well on behalf of Andy M71, one of the members. 50. Oh, 40, thanks, Tim. 30. Uh, for the two pounds. 20. 10. I oh, really, Tim. Did you guess? Uh, did you guess 120 right after we got 120? 120 FPM. Really? Um, 50, sus. 40. <laughs> 30. Tim again. 20. 10. <laughs> what do I win for that? I said 120. Nothing, Tim. Unbelievable. Thank you very much, anyway, for the continued support and for those uh, generous donations there. Very, very kind here. Uh, right, anyway, it's the cul de sac we go. As I mentioned, this uh, scenery is from TDG. Very, very nice. Uh, you're toggling the parking brake before vacating, maybe a key binding area. Yeah, so Nico Kator, the way I have my brakes assigned in X-Plane 11, unfortunately, for certain aircraft, they are also configured as the parking brake, because I want to ensure that when I pull the trigger, it applies max manual braking, which I think it comes up in an X-Plane as toggle max braking force, um, because the other options I think is not quite, it's regular braking force, it's not enough, so if you need to stop you've got no way of doing it. Um, so certain aircraft I think they have that binded to the parking brake, for example the Beluga, but another aircraft it is literally maximum braking, so yeah it's a bit annoying, but um, I want to have that option of, of having the maximum braking force using the trigger on my joystick then. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ground control is giving me a tour of the nice scenery, it is! Completely free, guys. Completely free. TDG. Completely dies. And they're all aircraft on that sim as well. Right, anyway, let's go round. Not sure if they'd be too happy with a Beluga going in this way. We tip clearance issues. Perhaps. Uh, Listening, could you use the rudder pedals to brake? Absolutely. The Cytec rudder pedals are great for rudders, but for braking? Uh uh. I tried it when I got it. And differential braking, it, it's so. There's no feel. There's no back pressure. Um, it's horrible. I tried it, but it's all over the place, so I have it disabled. Um, cannot get comfortable bits. Your Beluga barely fits, I know. Let's get the master switch on. AP started. But what an aircraft, guys. It's great fun to, to fly. Let's get this truck back to headquarters, though, ready for tomorrow's stream. Try and taxi from this view, looking the wrong way. Uh, going a little bit fast. Hear the APU starting as well. Beautiful. Can't remember if I need to turn yet. No, nope, that'll be stand 8 0 there. Sounds are great as well. Luton Grounds, Alpaca 1G at Nikon, Bravo. Oops, bit off the taxi line. Not bad though. Uh, right, so Alpaca next left uh, via Delta 4 to the Stand 71 area. We're going to go for Stand 30. And uh, yes, one of the trucks will go straight into this hangar. Oh look, there's some people waiting for us. Stand Fire Bravo, Echo. Bravo Echo Delta, uh, Alpaca 1G at Mike. There we are. Just confirm that. Got someone one. waiting for us there. Uh, three one, that's why I can see it. Uh, Alpaca 1G at Mike. Oh, look, we're going to get that lorry through that tiny gap. <laughs> oh, we've got some marshalling as well. 50. So what I'm going to 30, do, I'm going to park 20, right on the stand. It's going to be to turn right, but that's a bit early. Let's go now. Thank you, Rory. Uh, he says, will there be an Alpaca Logistics sequel? Uh, there will be, Rory. Have a look at the link uh, at the top of the uh, comments section, which we'll be linking for tomorrow's stream, uh, where we'll be taking the... Um, the Alpaca Logistics truck around the UK. Thank you very much for your donations, sir. Very, very kind. Right, anyway, there's the marshalist telling me to stop. Uh, so, parking brake is set now. For the purposes of unloading, uh, I'm actually going to now log off of that sim. Thank you so much to the controller for all their ATC. Very unrealistically, <laughs> I'm going to reverse a bit because I want, I want to unload my truck. I don't want it to look ridiculous coming out of the uh, stand. <laughs> Just for a bit of fun. 
There we are. Should have sufficient room. Oh no, I'm going <laughs> way too fast. Oh, full power. There we are. Let's imagine we part like that. And that should give me sufficient room for my truck to be unloaded. He's going to be waving the whole time, but uh, never mind. Other professional live streams available. <laughs> Parking brake set. APU's available. Uh, APU generator's ready to go online, so all we need to do is shut the engines down. There we are. Engines shut down. Turn off these lights. And uh, we'll have a bit of APU bleed on as well. And uh, yeah, there we are. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Luton on the uh, cargo apron here. A little bit reversing. Nothing to see here. Move along. <laughs> You've got it simply. Beautiful. What an add-on. Don't forget we're going to do a giveaway now as well on behalf of Andy. services. Uh, let's get the chocks in place. And don't worry about external power. Loader. Request loader. Here he is. And it should be. Ah, here we are. Opening up the carnivorous holes. Ready to unload the truck. Beautiful. So then, guys, we're going to do a little giveaway here. Uh, I've said it so many times today. I'm going to say it again. Andy M71, one of my members, contacted me this morning. He says, Sam, you mentioned uh, a few Beluga streams ago if ever wanted to, anyone to host a giveaway, get in contact with you, and I'd like to give away a copy of the uh, Airbus Beluga to someone that watches your videos. So I thought, you know, Andy, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so he's very kindly sent me over a copy, uh, a licensed copy of the, of the Beluga over. And it's covered the cost. Um, so, so you can uh, get this fantastic aircraft uh, for you here. Now, I can see here, Amir is very keen. Just turn the noise down. Uh, Abby is very keen to get the giveaway started, but uh, I'll be asking a very simple question here in, in chat for you, for you to uh, have a, a chance of, of winning this aircraft here. And I need to actually think about it before to do it before the, uh, the stream. Um, so, let me have a think. Could we have as our keyword today for the giveaway? I know what we could use here. Uh, a good one for our non friends. <laughs> so Andy, uh, if you're still around here, hey Andy's still here, he says you're welcome, so a uh, massive thank you if you can have a chat to everyone on AndyM71. He's also on Twitch I believe, so go check out his channel on Twitch. So AndyM71 who's, who's giving away a copy uh, of this aircraft here. Now if you're the lucky winner, I'd like you to get in contact with me. I uh, I have some good contacts in any builds who uh, could sort me out with the copy there, get it sent over the key. You'll be flying this hopefully by the, uh, if not, by not the end of today, by the end of tomorrow. Definitely by the end of the week anyway, once I get in contact with the guys uh, from any builds here. Uh, for the giveaway. So, let me just get rid of the fly live. I'm just flying up Nightbot. Um, and let's go over here to giveaways. It's going to add the keyword. So, uh, the keyword, you can use lowercase or uppercase, it doesn't matter. Very important, please listen carefully. Only put the word in the chat box once. If you do it more than once, you will not have a chance of, of winning the giveaway, okay? Uh, so, the simple question I'm going to be asking you is this, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Uh, today, Alpaca Skylink has just delivered a truck uh, from Oslo to uh, London. I'll be streaming tomorrow over at Fly Data Sim Gaming the rest of the, the journey here. Um, traveling the UK in the truck, but what is the other word we use for truck in the UK? It begins with L, ends with Y, it has a couple of double R's in it. Uh, what is another word we use in the UK to describe a truck? You only need to put it in chat once, do not do it more than once, otherwise you will have uh, no chance of learning it. I think Samuel Butler is along the right, right lines, uh, so uh, I only need to put that in once. Uh, and make sure you only enter if you have X Plane 11, otherwise it'd be rather pointless. Here's a copy for the Beluga. And if 
you are the winner. What you need to do is get in contact with me via social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I try to be as responsive as possible on social media. It's pretty much impossible these days with the amount of DM requests and, and whatnot. Uh, or even if you're a member on Discord, just drop me as well. It is completely open to everyone, by the way. You have no more of a chance of winning if you're a member, just to be fair. First screen simulations reckons a Lamborghini. Not quite. Very good. The keyword I was looking for was lorry, which I'm now just about to unload. Uh, so make sure you type that in chat if you haven't done so already. <laughs> As I do with all giveaways. Uh, especially if you haven't refreshed the stream. I'll give it another 30 seconds before I roll it. Here she comes. What a sight. Seriously, not quite. Uh, Ian, what's the Discord? The Discord is for members of the channel only. I remember a members only Discord. It's not Lolly Colorado 72. There we are. Uh, Tim! <laughs> HGB, no! That doesn't begin with L and then Y. <laughs> Does the truck have a toga? Yeah, it's just pushed it now, look. That's <laughs> such a cool, cool sight. Help him get a Skylink. Uh, Kitty System, as a new member, where's the link to Discord? So Kitty System, 50, uh, go to Google, 40, uh, 30, type in YouTube, 20, Discord synchronization, 10. follow the steps there, Kitty System. Uh, it's automatically generated invite based on your membership status. It's how it's all synced and worked together. Um, so uh, if you have any problems, Kitty, uh, and if you're a member and you're not in the Discord, drop me a, a DM, email, or on social media, we'll get you all sorted. Right, anyway, I think it's about time we uh, did the giveaway. So, congratulations to everyone that said lorry, uh, but there can only be one winner. Let's roll it now and see who has won a copy of the amazing Mini Builds Airbus Beluga. So, the winner of the giveaway is. Uh, roll it. It is uh, David Ryder. David Ryder. Congratulations, you are the winner of this channel. Subscription stage is unknown. Uh, so, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. Congratulations. He's won the giveaway. GG, everyone's saying. Uh, commiserations. But, uh, no doubt we'll be doing... Well, no, next stream we'll be doing a giveaway on this channel. We'll be doing a, a copy of the, uh, uh, Knock Island West you can win from, uh, very kindly provided by, um, Bound the Simulations. So, uh, giveaways all week. Uh, Python 360 fix. Unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, David Ryder, thank you, Flying Dexter Sim and Andy. Only thanks to Andy, David Ryder. That is one of the members who's, who's covering uh, me today. So that's amazing of you there. Oh, David, you're a member. So sorry. Oh my goodness. No, it's definitely going to be sus, isn't it? Oh my goodness me. Well, with over 40 or 50, no, 50 percent of my viewers are members now. Uh, it's quite often that uh, a member does win there. But uh, uh, me, chart. Yeah, he's a member. Therefore, rigged. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's completely random. Uh, if I share the display, I can't because it's on my laptop. You'll see that. Uh, it's all available. It's actually been a while since I've ever won, so unbelievable on there. Uh, amazing. Well, thank you very much, Andy. Firstly, M71 for, for giving away a copy of the Beluga for everyone. That was super, super kind of you. I, I got to do something else here. Please take the truck away, otherwise I'm not going to be able to stream tomorrow. There he goes. Um, uh, so thank you very much again, Andy. Very kind. Well done uh, to you, David. Drop me a message uh, on Discord. As you 50, on social. 40, uh, thank you very 30. much. And uh, Philip uh, Messenger has just donated five euros. I'm just going to increase the simulation rate here just to get that. Hi, Captain truck on Superb his way. Flight. Despite the latter performed on the ugliest plane ever built, <laughs> keeping impressive. Thanks again for the excellent stream. Thank you very much, Philip, for the five euros. So kind. Not the prettiest aircraft. Uh, an absolute um, uh, ugly beast, but uh, an absolute beautiful plane to, to fly and take from A to B in the sim. Thank you very much, Shirley. Uh, Donation and your continued uh, viewership on the channel. Very, very kind. Uh, Stephen, what a fantastic thing to do from Andy. Demonstrates the great community. Absolutely, yeah, Stephen. It was so nice to, to, to offer that today. Um, Aaron, it was the rigging software on his laptop. Unbelievable. Uh, reverse Green, I might become a member. Seems like a good investment. <laughs> Thank you very much, Reverse Green, for your consideration. Um, if you press the join button, you'll see a little bit more about it, um, what perks you get included. It's not just a private member's Discord and the custom emojis, but on that Discord, uh, you know, very active on there. I'll be doing streams usually before I test sectors, things like that. So we're doing lots of things there. You know, I join voice chat, you can ask me questions, talk to me directly. So I'm sure the members will vouch uh, for, for its um, services there. So thank you very much for your 
your trace there. Right, there we go. There's the truck being taken away as soon as that's disappeared. We'll do the replay of the landing and we'll call it uh, the end of the day for another fantastic stream. There we are, on its way to the London headquarters. Uh, superb. Right, uh, let's turn the music uh, down uh, here. And uh, actually, what I need to do now is remove the chocks, otherwise you'll have chocks on the replay, I think. And uh, cue the funky replay music. Here we go. There we are. So, into the replay view. Just turn this music down there. It's too, too funky for us at the moment. Uh, there we are. Not a bad landing today, actually. Let's put ourselves here on the approach. There we are. That's just about a touchdown. Crank up the volume. Site. Stephen Turley, we can just about hear you. Thank you very much for joining as a member. Get invited to our members over Discord and join the custom modes and chats. Google YouTube Discord synchronization and uh, YouTube Discord synchronization. Follow those steps and they'll get you in there. There's the left rudder look. Oh, nice and deep crap there. Perfect. A little bit heavy on the nose there though. Should have been a little bit lighter. Uh, resting at rate of descent. Uh, you don't want to be smashing that nose down. Let's have a look here. Again. There's that crab look. So it's only about an 8 knot crosswind, not much at all, but I I, the crosswind would be quite, like, quite limiting on aircraft like this with the size of the fuselage. So coming into flare. There's the check. Holding actually a little bit of left rudder. Nice little touchdown, so there we are. Vader on into wind. Beautiful. Sounds on this thing awesome. What a beast. How does that even fly, says Chad. <laughs> Oh look, truck's gone. <laughs> to put you in the tower view. Uh, what's the tower? Can't remember. Yeah. That's what. Uh, that's some tower controller saw today. Barry S. Great stream, Captain. Looking forward to tomorrow. Thank you very much, Barry. Yes, we'll be going live tomorrow at 8pm over on the second YouTube channel. Remember uh, the flight sim content on this one. There's a D crab and a nice butter. Guys, aircraft is 45 pounds for any builds, plus VAT is around 50 quid. It's, it's such a high quality. You should take a look at their A300 as well. I probably will take the A300 out next, it's been a while since we've flown that one. Three Belugas in the row. There we are. Excellent. Well, then, guys, what I will do, I will put you in the view. Oh, that's loud. Uh, so you can enjoy this landing here. I don't really have a window view for the cabin as well, but. Uh, Yes, where do I even start? Well, firstly, again, one more time, and DM71, thank you so much for your generosity today, giving away a copy of this for one lucky winner, uh, David. Uh, so kind of you as well. Um, I don't want to say thanks, buddy. Um, what else? To everyone that donated, thank you so much for all your donations. Very much appreciated. Never ever required. I don't ever feel like you to donate. So, you know, if you just, all I ever want you to do, if you really enjoy the content, smash the thumbs up button. Uh, like the video as well. Uh, oh, subscribe as well. Oh, do everything. Press every button on the page. <laughs> to all the members, thank you for the continued support. As I just mentioned, I'll be live tomorrow over over uh, over on Flight Next and Gaming um, for a nice ETS2 stream. I'll get my nice wheel set up and we'll go trucking around uh, the UK. Uh, stay safe, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you all uh, tomorrow. Bye bye for now.